we can just start probably with uh, installing telescope because um, that's probably the easiest like next thing to do. Uh, oh, I didn't even check. You're on NeoVim like nightly, right? No. Oh no! Oh no! I was told what? by chat to change it. Oh no! Oh wait, what NeoVim are you on? They, they told me to get mad at me. Oh no! Give me. Oh. Yeah, if you do NeoVim version, what do, what do we have here? What am I gonna do, chat? Oh, that's okay. That's okay. We can get we can get this super easily. <laughs> uh oh. Okay, so I'm the first thing we'll do is just uh, rem uh it'd probably be, it'd be apt installed in the OVIM. I think probably not Envim. Um, oh, yeah, you're, you're probably I probably right. should have said this earlier. I just I I forgot that that people aren't. Uh... So what we need Imagine to do not now, being up to date. Yeah, you actually just need to uh, remove it. Like mm -hmm. you need to uninstall, which I think is purge for app get. I always forget. Oh, wait. It might be a remove as well. That might work as well. Probably the easiest way for us to do this today. Mm, well, we could just build from source. It's really easy. Okay. Uh, so if you wanted Did to build you... from source, this is a this is a good thing for. I'm gonna go find uh, where the easiest easiest uh, link is to send in chat for people to uh, to basically build for yourself. Chat, are uh, you guys following along? If not, you're going to be like in trouble, okay? By the way. All right, this all right is so I sent, along. I sent the link for uh, building NeoVim. Pretty much mm -hmm. what you'll need to do is there will be some build prerequisites, which you can just literally do the copy-paste for... Uh, you're on Ubuntu, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you can just copy paste in those build requirements um, to here to install them. You probably already have a bunch of them because um, they're relatively, you know, standard build requirements. And then mm -hmm. once you have those, you just need to clone NeoVim. Uh, so you can just do like wait for get clone uh, somewhere somewhere that you want. You know what I mean? Like okay. get clone this. Oh yeah 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 okay okay. So we can just put that put that somewhere that you uh, like. Okay okay. Someone asked in the chat, why wouldn't you use the package manager to install Envim? So Telescope requires the nightly version of NeoVim, not the uh, stable version. So that's why we would need uh, that's why we need this. So then once you have uh, once you've cloned, which we can clone to wherever. Um, oh, I use Linux root. Interesting, Forged. That's pretty cool. Never tried it before. Did you uh, run the command bash? Mm mm. -mm. Cool. I almost, I, I almost got there. <laughs> uh, and then it's super, e it's super easy once you've done, once you've done this, because after we clone it, you can just uh, CD inside of it, and then we'll just do make, and then sudo make install. So it's pretty. Pretty straightforward to do uh, the install for latest NeoVim. Okay. Uh, which is pretty easy. And then while while that's installing, I can walk you through some of the maybe the general concepts of or some of the like simple things that we can start doing. Um, you know, once we've once we have things uh, running. Okay. Cool. Okay. So I I I cloned it into cloning into NeoVim in my home directory. Yep. So just go ahead and CD inside of there. Oh shoot! Uh, I'm CD sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can just type make, and that will start. Uh, that'll start start doing things. Oh my god! Okay. Yeah. Now you look like a big time Ooh. hacker, which is pretty cool. Hacker man's. Ooh hoo! Yeah. Um, and while that's going, we can look at uh, we can look at this link here, which is just like kind of the most straightforward example of what. Uh... Yeah, Diego, we're gonna upload it. Um, this is kind of the most straightforward example of what Telescope can do. So the idea of Telescope is all sort of centered around this idea of fuzzy finding. And we'll mm -hmm. talk like how that's configured and what you can do with it sort of as we, as we go. Mm -hmm. But like the main concept, at least for files, which is where we'll start, because that's sort of like the mm, most common case that people use fuzzy finders for, is that generally you know pretty much like the name of the file that you're looking for, right? Like when we 
sure, were yes. in your project, you know, you're like, oh, I know that I pretty much want something with like notes in yeah. it or, you know, as the name notes, right? So instead of like navigating through your tree on the side of your screen, instead what you do is you open up your fuzzy finder. In this case, it would be telescope, but you could also use like FZF or control T or command P. There's like a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. um, and you would just type the word, like type notes, and then it will filter all the things that don't match that word, basically. Okay, cool. Right? Like That's that. kind of the idea. And then, you know, you'll be able to, okay, uh, then just type sudo make install now in your terminal as well, now that it's done. <laughs> and right. uh, yeah, so now you can do nvim dash dash version and hopefully we'll uh, see a uh, newer Neovim. Oh, damn, Ooh. 0.5? Hi. Okay, cool. Hello? Who is yep. she? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you did it, super hacker mode too, compiling from source. Um, okay, so now you just need to install Telescope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we have that in our readme of how you would want to oh. do that. I thought uh, I would import it like a like a thing. Oh, you got to do like a... Because you've got other plugins, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Uh, That's the thing that I was yeah. referring to. Yep, so there the there's just like a little trick if you're not super used to it i sent you a, i sent you the link in twitch chat um <laughs> is, that, is that it has like two other plugins that it depends on that sort of implement a lot of shared functionality between telescope and other plugins mm -hmm. uh you know kind of like a library uh which is nice um so you'll just need to install basically oh it's just down a little bit on this page okay okay <clears throat> installation nice yep um, so you just need to install those three plugins. Ooh, it's a nice Vim config. Nice. Okay. Dang. Dang. Just kidding. Don't actually look, Teach. It's it's probably uh, not up to your Oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. Oh, interesting. You have Control P installed, is which is also a fuzzy finder. But you obviously don't use it. <laughs> I clearly don't use it. Control P. I'm pretty sure I stole this from uh, Melky's config. Oh, <laughs> this nice. is like okay. a fork of his, and then I've erased many things, but this I didn't know. Didn't know what that meant. Yeah. I don't need it. It's trash. It's uh, not telescope. Yeah, I don't if, want if it. If you're not using it currently, then you don't need it. It's, uh, it's good, and it was you know kind of a pioneer in a lot of ways, but uh, people, uh, not that many people are using it at this exact moment. Chat, if it's not telescope, we don't want it. I, I, Dang. You heard it here I, first. I didn't say it. Um, no, just chat, there are other good ones out there. Okay, so now you can just uh, plug install and then uh, and then restart. There will be a few other things that we will sort of like add as we as we go, but we'll just start with the like very basic config. And then, uh, oh, I think you, get, you need to resource that. Oh, yeah, config. silly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're good. You're okay, good. I did silly things. It's fine. I forget things sometimes. It's, it's fine. I'm just like this. Nice. Okay, so we've got it installed. Very cool. Um, so now we can just, I would just quit out, quit out of uh, NeoVim and let's go back into that one, uh, that one project that you were in before. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, do I remember what it's Wait. called? <laughs> yep. And then, uh, yeah, we can just open up NeoVim again. We can probably make this, yeah, full screen. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, and so now, Telescope comes with like a sort of like a helper wrap that lets you know all the things that it can do currently. So if you do like colon telescope, and then space, and then you can hit tab, and then you'll see like Ooh. a bunch of different options. Uh, the one that we're currently interested in would be like find files um, or git or git files will be fine. Either one I think should hopefully work. Um, okay. We may have to install some other dependencies to get some of these to work because they're um, they do how, things. How do I know? Uh, do you do I tab, just keep hitting you control, tab? Control P uh, to move up and down. Oh, I see. Okay, so thank you, thank you. Okay, yep. so tab and then control P. Yep. Oh, I see. And that'll move you around. Um, so if you pick Git files, is good. Mm -hmm. We can hit after on that. Oh my and God. then. Dun, dun, dun. Now we've this got is this. Exciting. I'm excited. Yeah, so these are just your like files that are checked into Git. So if you start typing something like 
uh, have it store, right? See how it starts to, it'll filter those down until that's sort of like the most likely suggestion because that's it has, so cool. you know, have it and store. But uh, the nice thing like generally about telescope would be that, uh, so like you can press uh, control C to quit out of here or escape twice. I will get into that later. Mm -hmm. You run that same command again um, and you just type like HBIT instead of habit, right? He's like, oh, I fat fingered habit, you know, HBIT store or something like that. Oh, nice. That's um, wild. So it still makes sort of like its best guess for what you're trying to do. Um, and the like, my sort of favorite part about uh, telescope would be this idea that um, each part of telescope that you're seeing right now has its own is is 100 percent like customizable so the the part in the left that says results right mm -hmm. that window um those are basically all sort of like um they're basically like little lua tables and you can store any info that you want like inside of those and telescope will consume them and then you can do actions with them. So it's very cool because it's cool. not like you need to, or you could like make them be like, instead of lists of files, they could be like references to files with line numbers, or they could be like a list of definitions that you want a fuzzy find to go to the definition of something. So like the concept mm -hmm. is that any of those uh, items can be inside of there and what they display and how they sort and each of those things are all like separate configurable items, mm -hmm. right? That's so then, cool. Yeah, the next layer of it, and we'll like as we go. Uh, so that part's called a finder because it finds the things that you're looking for. <clears throat> then the next sort of like little bit in this puzzle is that there's a thing called a sorter. And the sorter is what takes the text that you type in at the bottom and assigns scores to the different results, right? So that's how like it gets to choose whether some things are like good or bad matches, right? Which is, so that's pretty cool because then that means like for different scenarios, you can actually have different scoring. Um, or if, you know, your way of picturing how, um, like how two things should match against each other is different than mine, that's totally cool. We can have two different like functions basically there returning the different values. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then on the right side is a previewer. And in this case, it's quite simple because it just literally shows the file. You know, there's nothing that crazy about it, but we can actually do something like if you escape back out of this mm -hmm. and then you uh, type like telescope get underscore commits. Oh, shit, wait, <laughs> I keep forgetting. Okay, control P. Yep, and then control N is for next as control, well. So you can okay, yeah, 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 that makes sense. I was like, wait, pre P for previous, yes. Okay, that makes yep. sense. So if you do get commits, this actually will parse all of the commits that you have for this. You could fuzzy find over those. And notice how the preview no longer shows like a file. Yeah. Right? It, shows it actually the, shows you the diff. The changes. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah so, so like each aspect of telescope is effectively like just a different lua function which is cool because that means like you can continuously like uh improve or customize for like each action and they all sort of like talk together really nice there's not like um how would i say this? there's not like some boundary between the two where you need to like serialize everything into like JSON or something like that, right? It's yeah. actually just all like Lua the whole way and they can talk to each other and NeoVim very well uh, because like in NeoVim we've added Lua scripting as a way to like configure and interact with the editor. That's so dope. That's yeah. actually so sick. Yeah. So then like you could just start typing in the bottom something like dependencies or something like that, right? And then if you just start typing letters and then it'll be like, oh, now I can actually oh go through my history. And if we pressed enter here, which we probably don't want to do case, uh, it will actually check out. It will send you to that commit basically in this case. 
And if you're right? using those, like, yeah. And if you're using like standardized commit messages, like what's it called? Um, yeah, there's a couple different styles, yeah. but yeah, you, you could, could look like, for like all of the certain kinds of changes that you've made based on the commit message that you put in. That's so, so sick. Right. This is this is just like you know meant to demonstrate that like it's not just that the fuzzy finder actually acts like only on files or only on strings or etc. Right? It's actually that the concept is you can put basically anything you want inside of there and mm -hmm. then keep on moving. Right? Um, someone asked, can you do git commits on one file? Yes, it's uh, git underscore b commits for buffers, which is pretty cool. Oh, cool! Um, Should we try that? Yeah, or, or we could even try something a little different. We could do something like telescope uh, commands. So this this is uh, this one's pretty cool. There's uh, yeah, this one this one's good. So it'll this one shows you actually all of the commands that you currently have for your NeoVim, and then it shows you what the command actually does. Oh, so, very cool! I forget my yeah. key. My like, for, I forget my customizations all the time. This is very convenient. Right. So like, you could literally type nerd tree in the bottom, right? And it will um, basically like start filtering um, only things. That are like, oh, right, that's the one. It's mirror toggle, not toggle mirror. How did I not remember this? You know, like the, this kind of uh, this kind of stuff is uh, very cool, and the idea is pretty much what we like try and do is that we like uh, have telescope integrate really nicely with things that already exist inside of NeoVim. So mm. uh, there is a there is a pretty cool plugin because you're using COC, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a pretty cool plugin. I haven't tested this one myself, um, but I've heard I've heard pretty good things about it, um, which is right here. So Telescope has its own way basically for like things to kind of like register themselves as extensions. Mm -hmm. uh, so like the one that I just did is like an example of using COC to do things like, um, which this one will be pr pretty cool. We could try installing installing this one. That would be dope. Um, I, yeah, I use COC for yeah everything. Yeah, so this <laughs> would let you do something like you can call telescope coc and then something like um workspace symbols and it will let you fuzzy find over all the names of the things that are in your project and when you press enter you would go to the definition of them so that's like a mm -hmm. very cool a very cool like example of how telescope is sort of built in this way that enables each aspect to be customized mm -hmm. that like it can sort of just allow itself to be used by other plugins, even though it has no knowledge of COC. Like it doesn't know anything about COC, right? So it can just yeah. be like, oh, COC has a way to return all of the workspace symbols. Oh, cool. Well, then we can just like, <laughs> we can just do that, right? Um, so that's really cool. Um, someone asked, do we have Telescope LSP? Uh, actually, the built-in LSP things are already built into Telescope. So you could just do something like Telescope LSP code actions or something like this. Lone Wolf asks, is there a way to scroll past one page of results in Telescope? Not currently, actually. It's a limitation that we would like to fix someday, but we have not uh, gone past it for a variety of odd technical reasons that are hard to explain. <laughs> Um, and equally hard to understand, yes. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so here's, so we have a GitHub-like organization called NVIM Telescope, and there's a bunch of different, um, a bunch of different sort of like extensions that go on top mm. of Telescope. Um, I would recommend that we, before we get too much farther, now that we've sort of seen what the very basics of Telescope um, is, we should install probably this plugin that I just sent, which is FCF native, and it has instructions on how to install with uh, Vim plug. And then we could probably okay. also install the Telescope COC one, although I've never used it, so it's a little bit riskier for us to try it live. But sure. you know, why so not? Why don't we go with this um, F FZF one? So what? So the the FZF uh, Canadian, one. Canadian, sorry, is... I can't help it. It's how I am. I'm just like this. Um, the FDF, uh, one is written by the wonderful Connie, who is in chat right now. Hey, Connie. Um, 
And what it does is it provides a much, not only faster, but also better uh, sorting experience. So uh, it's really cool because when you're doing that filtering and sorting, mm -hmm. it will um, basically just be a smarter algorithm that can guess even stronger for what you like are trying to type. And it also happens to be faster than the default one that we ship, but it's a bit more complicated because it has to compile C code. That's why you have that little do uh, make. Do make, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> for plug. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can probably just actually, let's just start with getting that one set up. So yeah, now sure. you've countered your first telescope ex extension, right? Um, there's a problem though, because you need to tell basically telescope in some way that you would like to uh, use this extension, right? Like telescope isn't just going to be like, oh, I'm going to start running a bunch of code. So you can mm -hmm. do plug install here is good. Um, and it will, it'll install uh, the new, the new thing and it should probably not air because it's pretty, uh, pretty simple, hopefully. Okay. It, it, it... Cool. Excellent, and it ran its post update hook, which is great. So now we need to get into sort of like the, we'll get into some of the very simplest uh, sort of configuration that we can do for um, <clears throat> like for telescope. Uh, telescope's configuration, I like I think is pretty cool, but it's maybe a little bit different than some of the ways that you like normally would um, configure plugins, mostly because I don't like using um, really big uh, blocks of basically like storing globals in places. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what we need to do is inside of your init.vim, we're going to need to uh, write something very similar to, well, let me see if I can send an easy link for you. Uh, I feel like that was you putting it very, very lightly that like, it hurts. It's a pain. It's painful. Yeah. So there's uh, there's sort of like uh, just a style of way that people put plugins like before mm -hmm. that I just don't like as much for what we're kind of trying to to do. I okay. sent a link in Twitch chat to the general sort of like default section. You uh, don't need to copy in this whole thing. Just beneath this, there should be a little thing that has uh, yeah, right there. Yeah. See that like Lua? Mm -hmm. you, yep. Do you know? Do you know what here docs are? No. It's just like where you. So see how it has Lua and then the two like arrows, and that says EOF and EOF. So everything inside of those two EOFs is um, is going to be executed as Lua inside of your init.vim. So it's basically like a little way that you can embed Lua inside of the Vim script part of your configuration. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> chat, chat like ham right now. I'm quite pleased that I'm, like I don't know really. I, I just think that's yeah. funny. Avoid BIM, BIM script at all costs. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> um. So so you can just paste this section in, and then we'll be able to basically add in some bonus uh configuration for this. Okay, I'll just put it at the end here. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I comment everything because I forget. Every okay, can I? I no you gotta press O. Go to the next one. Stop! I, I know. Oh, I hit my caps key. That's why. Oh, classic. That's a, that is a big problem inside of him. Chat things do cool things very in front of Teach. <laughs> Play cool chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So now this is your like very very basic way of setting up telescope um i guess should i yeah i'll link uh my config in the chat and then we can look at some of the stuff that i'm doing but yours should not be this complicated to start with so don't just like copy it we'll um we'll just look at it in in the browser for you to see some of the stuff that i'm kind of like that i'm doing Okay, perfect. I'll just copy it. Yeah, okay, perfect. All right, <laughs> perfect. see ya. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, and some of this probably won't work because I'm in the middle of some switching to a new. Uh, it doesn't doesn't super matter. There's not. You don't need to copy everything. But the idea here is that actually you'll see on line 53 on in my section, uh, we oh, start yeah. our require telescope dot setup. So this mm -hmm. is sort of like the same sort of situation we've got going on both sides, and you'll be able to put your own things inside of here, right? So um, you can delete that line on 444 where there's just a comment and yeah. add a new field called defaults. Have you written any Lua, by the way? I should ask that. No. Okay, cool. So in Lua, the syntax for tables is if you just put like characters on the left side of the equals, it's like storing it as a string in a table, right? So if you, um, yeah, so like, yeah, so that would be like the string CD blah, 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 mm -hmm. as like the character that you're matching. And then you can do whatever, whatever expression you want on the right. And then you can just like, you know, you can do another squirrely brace and then that would start like a new table, right? Or if you put five, then that would store five into the table. Okay. Yes, exactly. Amstring and your mom. So both of those are strings. One is the key, one is a key and one's the value, right? So mm -hmm. that's like the style out of it for stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new um, a new table inside of there called defaults. Okay. And this will hold basically like the defaults that you want for your telescope experience. Um, so then we're going to make, yeah, so we're going to do a new table and then like the first thing that we can set up. Oh, that's weird. Why did it do? I, I don't know. That, that scared instead? me. Yeah, that shouldn't happen. Um, <laughs> my config is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that new, <laughs> it causes me no problems there. ever. <laughs> um, Missing comma. Oh, this, oh yeah. Oh, I yeah, see, yeah. I see. Uh, you should just delete the am string line anyways as well, because that'll <laughs> mess things up. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Cool. So let's just, we'll just set something very simple at first. So you can do prompt underscore prefix as like the, the thing that we're going to set. And we can set it equal to something. And then you can just make it like some uh, string that you want to be at the beginning of your telescope prompt. So you could just do like dollar sign or something like that or dollar sign space. You know what I mean? I'll just, I'll just so, do that. Yeah, right. So perfect. Okay, so now we can. Um, so then if you save this file, um, and then you I think, I think this will just auto update. So if you run, uh, if you source this file with like source percent, like do I have to quit first and then restart it? Uh, if you do source, uh, source space percent. I don't know if you know this trick or not. I don't. So percent on the command line is uh, basically expanded to the current file. Uh, so when you type source space percent, that basically says, hey, source this file. It just means rerun this file. I did it. And I don't so it. now if we do something like a uh, telescope, uh, is this in a Git repo? Your, yeah. your config? Okay, yeah. So you could try and do something like uh, telescope uh, git commits. If you start typing like git and then new tab, it'll only show the for like that thing. Okay, so this, uh, maybe, or maybe. Oh, our current working directory is not inside of uh, a git repo, but that doesn't really matter. All I wanted to show mm -hmm. is that no, now your prefix is your dollar sign in space. See how in the prompt oh, area, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. dollar sign. So, like, so, so it's like, cute. okay, sweet. We have now configured our very first aspect of a telescope, right? Mm. Uh, there's lots of other things you can read about, about sort of the way you want it to be displayed and the configuration for that and, and all these other things. But what's not, um, we, I don't think we need to super go into that. That's probably better uh, to do like as you're exploring. That would but this is just like a, a fun follow-up to this. Is what? like, that could almost be like a fun follow-up to this. I feel like yeah. a lot of people are gonna wanna configure it, but like, this is a great yeah. like intro and then, you know. And we're also going to change a few things about this in the next week or two, uh, how the like layout is configured, uh, which we didn't do right now specifically. I know we're going to change that. Um, <laughs> uh, but but that, that part's OK. It'll be relatively close to what's in the docs currently. We just okay. want to make it a little bit simpler for people starting up. But let's, let's move on to the next part of this, which is that um, we want to. So we had, if you just press Escape, yeah. twice we'll get out of 
we'll get out of this section. Now what we want to do is we want to um, install uh, what that that basically the sorter that we added to scope FCF native. And if you read the docs for that, it'll just tell you effectively. We'll skip we'll skip the reading right now. Um, that you just need to put this little require telescope uh, dot load extension that I pasted into the um, mm -hmm. into chat. You just need to put that after your setup call. Okay. Uh, inside of that Lua area still, basically. Okay. So like, so like oh, shit. after that last curly brace there, we just paste this in. <clears throat> Like that. Oh, af yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, perfect. That's great. Yep. So that just basically tells Telescope, hey, I have installed this FCF extension, and I I want you to load it up and basically like use its defaults. There's ways that you can configure it, but I uh, we don't need to like really do that uh, currently at at this exact time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now uh, we basically have. Uh, let me think if there's anything else we should do. This part's probably good. So if we quit back out of this and we go back to sort of like your project that we were in before. Um, oh, I guess yeah, that's maybe in your first tab as well. Yeah, because I don't use i3. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So let's just quit out of this and open it up again. Yeah. And then now let's uh, let's do telescope uh, git files again. Okay. And then now do something like you type uh, S space C space N or something like that. Oh, uh, and I got to go back to this. Wait, yeah, see can how you it, see? Can you, yep, I can see it now. I just I'm was, my I was on my, okay. Okay, you're good, you're good. Okay. It's on a different one. So see how that sort of picked out that, yeah. uh, oh, those are the first things of each one. Or, you know, we can backspace out our prompt all the way again. And we could just type, like, if you just type SCN without spaces, I think it'll still probably it does, yeah. have a decent chance of picking that one. Obviously, you have other things, S, C's, and N's. In. But if you did, like, S, probably capital C, capital N, um, I think it'll pick that one as the only option in your whole code base. Very interesting. So with this, like, this is sort of the... You know, this is like where you start to imagine, oh, now let's say instead of just working on a project that only has 100 or like 30 files, you work on a project, I'll just right here. Um, I've got uh, space, oops. telescope, get files. Uh, I've got 6,000 files in my main repo at work, which is not even that big for like some projects, right? Because we have several different repos. Mm -hmm. um, so that you can imagine clicking through on your nerd tree does not scale super well when you have 6,000 no, files in your repo. I, I, yeah, and I'm like pretty, I can be pretty forgetful sometimes. So I'm like, oh shit, yeah. what directory is it in? Right, yeah, and that's the <laughs> other thing. Like maybe you just remember only the name that you called it, you know, like, Mm -hmm. uh like something you know or do you want to search for all the files with like model in the name because like django or something you have all you only want to do your components right can you look for so, like i sorry i don't mean to interrupt but like oh, can you look for a um like a specific function with telescope i'm assuming you can but like yeah, i feel like that's so, a common one that people would look for yeah so there's two let's we'll go on to um, two sort of like different things that uh, you, you could have uh, normally. So let's quit all the way back out. Mm -hmm. I think you want to install. <coughs> oh, actually, oh. Okay, so I think as the easiest way to install ripgrep, just sudo apt install ripgrep, does anyone know in chat? Uh, I don't remember what it is like offhand because I installed it a long time ago. Like that? Ripgret? Uh, yeah, I'm looking right now to see what uh, what the suggestion is. Yeah, you can just do sudo apt install ripgret. It's good. I did apt get. I don't know. We'll see if it works. Yep, that's the same. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You're good. So this is just like a tool that does grep uh, real fast, real good, more or less, is, is all you'd need to know about it. Mm hmm. Um, 
So now if we go back inside of uh, inside of Neovim. Okay, yes, 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 yes. I'll do that. And we can do something like, um, in this project, I think this should probably be fine. You should be able to do telescope, and then let's do live underscore grep. Is a is a cool one. Oh, cool. So yep, let's okay. hit enter. This one should be small enough project that this works okay. Oh, do I have um, to restart it after installing it? Nope, nope, this is good. So now start typing like the name of a function maybe that you remember, um, or just like or like to do or something like that. Or I know, you know. That I have like this home like component. Yeah, there you go. So now you can you can go through these and you could pick like which one. Very cool. And I think I have. Uh... <coughs> It's literally been so long since I've looked at this. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so I can see everywhere that, like, for example, this on click yep. is. And then if you press oh. enter, which I, we haven't even done yet, I guess, you can press enter and it'll take you right to that file. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my neo, my tree was open, so now it's all weird. Yeah. So, that's so, cool. so that's so that's pretty cool. Um, Damn. The live grep doesn't work super great in a large project. Um, mm -hmm. We're actually working on that um is it just but slow? there's a yes it's, it's it's slow because uh if you search for something that has um like a million references we need to basically like load all of those references and loading like a million things as you type every time you type sometimes doesn't go that fast <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah uh so yeah so it's like uh so but so like live rep sometimes goes slow but what you could do instead, and I'll let me just confirm that this works before I say what to do. Okay, yes, perfect. So if you do something like telescope uh, mm -hmm. space grep string, grep underscore string, space, and then you can actually type search, like equals, and then something that you want to search. So like, let's say you do search equals and then type like home, like you had before. Yep. Hit enter. See how now that gets loaded up. And what's cool about this mode is you can fuzzy find over these results. So if you start typing like default, mm -hmm. because you notice that you want to go to the one with default, that's the only one that's going to be left. You can press enter and you'll go right to that spot in your project. Okay. Okay. And that's different <coughs> because the uh, uh, like the other one, it would have basically been like fuzzy finding through like the whole library instead of just this like single search term for home. So yeah. it like eliminates some processing that it has to do. Right. Okay. Well, and the difference for this one is that you grep sort of like a constant string and mm -hmm. you get back uh, the results and you can fuzzy find over those results. So if you know exactly what you search for, like you want to search for the word home, yeah. This way is much better because then you can pick out of all the occurrences the one that you like best. Right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? As opposed yeah. to the other one, it's just literally like whatever you're typing, it's searching that, which is like not the same, not the same. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Um, so, yeah. yeah, 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 okay. So it's almost like an exact match. Yes. Beyond, the first one is like exact match, and this one is like, okay, you have something that you're looking for. Now fuzzy find over those results. So okay, they're okay. two sort of they're like related, but they're not exactly the same. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so so that's so that's super cool. Then what you can do, obviously, is like we won't spend a bunch of time doing this today, probably, but like you can just start mapping different key maps to do each of these different kinds of searches for you. So like mm -hmm. for me. I have like uh, space FD is for find files. So it's mm -hmm. like I can just hit space FD from wherever I am, it finds files. But then I have space FT that finds basically git files. And so like I have all these different mappings to do particularly like special things that I want to do, mm -hmm. um, which is like really, uh, really fast and convenient. And you can even make it so that it runs like in uh, different locations. So if you wanted to run like a search in your config files, we could set it up so that it always like opens up all the files that are in your config. Um, but okay. let's, well, let's do That's that as cool. an example. Let's actually do that as an example. So let's right. like, you can just hit enter or whatever to close this, this one. And so if you do, so just even though you're like, right, you know, let's, let's CD back into your productivity app just to show that this okay. works from like anywhere, right? And let's, okay, so we can just open NeoVim up again. We should be able to do something like 
telescope. I'll just check and make sure that it works. Beautiful. Okay. So what you can do is you can do something like telescope, find underscore files, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, space. And let's do CWD equals um, like tilde slash dot config, right? Because that's where all of your config files. And hit enter. And so see how now it's got all of, we probably shouldn't fuzzy find over these in case any of them has um, keys or anything. I don't want you to dox yourself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but uh, if you uh, notice how like these are, this is not your current directory, right? This is actually somewhere else. Yeah. And so you could fuzzy find over these uh, or you could set it like just for your NVIM config or just for your like CSH config or whatever, or you could combine those together. Um, so that you could search for something in a different place, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. Uh, so it's like... So CWD is standing for like current working directory and you're basically just yep. like setting that to be some other directory somewhere on your computer. So no matter where you're opening the OVIM, you can just fuzzy find on that, file, like that right. directory. So I have basically like space en for edit NeoVim. It mm -hmm. opens up it opens up my finder for there. So like anytime I want to really eat something config or one of my other files in my config, I can really easily like switch to that. And I don't have to like close NeoVim or like type E tilde slash dot config and it like every time I just want to change something small, you know, it like instantly takes me there, yeah. <clears throat> which is uh, very cool. Um, that is very cool. I wish I could actually yeah. like without. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, we, can, we can do the same. Let's Let let's do that I same search. That with, you. Um, I've got yeah, right, other... Exactly. I think it is my, I can do go. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, I think that one I've got stuff in there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, right, so you can just fuzzy find over any of these, right? And so you could start typing like test or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. See all and the then, test files. Um, the telescope actually has a bunch of different ways that you can open files. I think by default, control V will then split this file. So if you do control V. Oh. That's cool. See how now it's split it. So you, we didn't have anything in the original file, so it's mm -hmm. exciting. But if you did have things in that original file, then it would have like kept that there. Obviously, it just like splits the files. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me. So you, I don't remember what the other one is. Control X, maybe. I don't have them by default. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. So it's like really easy to find Control. the two files you want to look at. You know, if you want to have both of them up at the same time, you can do that. You can split them. You can open up a new tab. All, all those kind of things that you'd expect. Oh my god, this is so much better than using NerdTree. Yes. <laughs> Why does Monkey uh, use NerdTree? Why is he uh, like because this? he doesn't listen to me. Just like a classic little brother move. It's like because <laughs> Big Brother told me to stop doing this, I'm gonna keep doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so, so. Anyways, you can imagine like mapping different things to different keys to like set these up to be doing, you know, all your common searches that you normally do queries or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can make that make that happen really easily. Oh my um, god, this is oh this is complete. So 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 far what we like what I've showed so far, I would say there's pretty much like no difference between telescope and uh <clears throat> like other fuzzy finders in terms of mm -hmm. like everything everything asks like some people were wondering uh like compared to fcf what's the difference there's um, there's very very little difference between telescope and fcf like up to these points um one thing that i will say is that uh the preview for telescope i don't know if you noticed but it was your color scheme yeah right like which is not a standard color scheme like it's not a color scheme that like fcf knows about or things like that right so Telescope actually uses your like literal NeoVim buffers to open up the previews. And so you're going to get exactly the same like colors and highlights and everything like compared to FCF. That's pretty much the only difference of uh, anything that we've said like thus far. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much the only difference. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, FCF is good. And in fact, I think FCF will feel probably faster um for like large searches uh because it's very good and it runs like asynchronous stuff so it's uh it's very cool project i i highly recommend using some fuzzy finder it doesn't have to be telescope okay um, cool. oh one, one person just asked is there a way to create files there is a pretty cool thing you can do uh, i don't know if connie's still in the chat but this is a shout out to connie here if you 
telescope file underscore browser. This one's very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so and then you can just hit enter. So this is like, these are your current files in the directory that you're in, mm -hmm. right? So if you type like, you know, you type SC for source basically, right? You know, it's like, oh, I didn't actually type source. Hit enter. Mm -hmm. And now it will take you to that next folder. So you can actually navigate, you know, if you're like, you still want to play around with your tree sort of and like look around inside of your tree, you could actually still do that if you wanted. That's um, and so then there's. Sick. There's a couple other shortcuts that you can do inside of here to make other files um, with like control E. I don't think we have super probably time to like get into that today because it's a bit, that's like its own kind of whole separate uh, separate thing. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Uh... Okay, okay. Yeah, if you did like hello, hello and then you did control E, it'll actually create that file. Oh, okay. There for... we go. There we go. Uh, everything is a shout out to Connie. So true. Thanks, Connie. It's good to see you. Thank you, Connie. Um, and that, of course, also accepts like the CWD argument. As much as possible, we've tried to make sure that like each sort of interface for each picker is like identical. Oh, so you I could see. actually do like if you escape back out of this and you do mm -hmm. file browser, but you do CWD equals, you know, slash. Uh, you don't need to do uh, quotes. I think that actually might mess it up. Oh, okay, okay. Um, like tilde slash dot config slash nvim or something like that. Mm -hmm. Hit enter. It'll actually open it up in that spot, which is pretty cool. So, like, mm -hmm. as much as possible, we've tried to like have all the names um, be exactly the same for each one. So you're like, okay, I I, I have now stood what CWD does. Mm -hmm. Anything that cares about where files are will accept CWD as an argument, basically. Mm -hmm. Oh, hydrate. Hydrate? Oh, man. OK. I came prepared. <laughs> you know what they want to see? They just want to yeah. see us hydrate. I knew, I knew we were going to get a hydrate request for that. <laughs> OK, so so that's sort of like an example of some of the like stuff that you can do inside of Telescope. And those are relatively, I think, sort of like straightforward. The file browser is a pretty unique experience for a fuzzy finder, but I suppose it, it may be possible to replicate with uh, FCF, although I've never seen uh, someone do something exactly like that. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to try now, honestly, I don't know if it's going to even work or not, um, but let's try that telescope COC, um, a telescope COC extension, because it shows, I think, some of the cool stuff that you can do, and I'll back in the chat again, um, just like that you can start doing and thinking about with telescope in ways that it can be i think extended and very very fun fun stuff someone asked oh yeah smith is answering all the questions thanks for putting hidden equals true yep yeah we I think say it's actually COC because coke. this is twitch chat okay mm -hmm. it's actually pronounced coke if you ask the creator not that anyone cares what creators thinks about the names of you know, but that's fine. What do you mean? Twitch chat, Twitch chat is always right. What do you mean? Twitch chat is always right. Teach. Okay, so for this one, all we have to do is it's a very similar concept, right? We just basically add in this plug, and then you have to tell it to load this extension again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. So we can just do plug, basically this. Yeah. Sorry, I was uh, trying to see if I could mute alerts, but I don't actually. Ah, gotcha. I'm sorry, your VOD, is, the VOD is just going to have alerts, I can't. <laughs> That's okay, I don't care. Okay. Oh, don't mind me. No one saw that. <laughs> no one saw that. Nothing happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Nothing to see here. I know what files and directories are. Yes, totally. I, I totally <laughs> know the difference. Yeah. Uh, and then this t require telescope load extension. Yep, is so that needs further to go, away? yeah. Uh, and then make sure you perfect. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, uh, yeah, no, that's fine, actually. That's fine. Yep. I was like, did I just delete it for real, for real? Yep. But no, we're good. Okay. And then do I, I just add it here? Yep. You just add it right right down there. Mm -hmm. um, and that just tells Telescope, yo, I, I want to load the COC extension. Okay, cool. So now uh, you'll just need to source this file and then plug install to get the COC plugin installed. Oh, right, because I can use that source. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Oh. What have I uh, oh, right. That makes sense. Uh, this file doesn't exist yet, so it's going to complain and say you haven't installed that. I forgot about that. Oh my part. god, that scared me. Look how aggressive that is. Oh my god. Okay. It's very aggressive. Yeah. So oh, you should still be able to plug install though um, from right here. Oh really? Still... Okay. Okay. Nice. So now it's done. Now I can do this. Should I do that source thing again? Oh shit. Uh, we should just we can just restart uh, Neovim. Let's actually go to a project that you have like COC. Oh, I don't know what just happened now. <laughs> I do this a lot. Uh, I actually do this. Okay. Yeah, you can just QA for Q all of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's go to a project that you have like COC working. Um, so I think like your Go I projects go you have COC yeah. working, right? That's a pretty that's a pretty good one for us to go explore. <clears throat> I like to trigger chat with my um, power power level, <laughs> power level. Yeah. Power level 9K, guys. Okay, mm -hmm, 9, mm -hmm. 9, k or whatever. Where you can read everything. You, mm -hmm. you can you can fit so many characters after it. <laughs> uh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Okay. So now I do new of him. Yeah. So and then we can do. Let's use telescope to find your files. Mm -hmm. So you know, find files. Wait. Uh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, find files or get files. They'll mostly work the same. Oh, wild. Okay, so there's find files, and then there's also file browser, and this is different. Yep. Those are different things. Yeah, because this one is like search through all your files all versus files. like, um, you know, the look at a file. The other one is like a folder, typical directory yep. structure. Okay, cool. Yeah. So let's just pick basically like any of these files, you know, that you've like edited before. Uh, yeah, let's just sure. do, let's just, let's just. Yeah, struct.go or something seems good, or wallet. Let's any of them are wallet. fine. All right, so now what I want to try and do, I actually, we're gonna just, we're just gonna see what happens. Let's try um, telescope, and then we'll do uh, space, and then coc, mm -hmm. and then space. And I actually don't know if you hit tab, will it complete here? I don't even remember. Yeah, it does. Cool. So let's do um, document symbols. Document symbols. Okay. Mm -hmm. And hit enter. Oh, so nice. notice these are the actual methods, fields, variables, functions in this file, right? Mm -hmm. So if you start typing wallet or something, mm -hmm. and then you hit enter, it'll take you to there. So if you have a large file or you have a lot of things in the file or you know what the name is, mm -hmm. you can just search for them. Right, and then you can use Control N and Control P just like before to move around, and you can hit Enter, and it'll send you. That's very cool. So that's like, so notice, Telescope knows nothing about COC, right? Mm -hmm. But it just basically exposes itself as a library to be composed by COC, um, which I think is like really cool that it just kind of like works that way. I don't even think um, that plugin is super huge, the COC one. I guess I've never I... code. There I've are- I've told it's full uh, here, but like- Oh, sorry, no, just the extension, I'm saying. So oh, the okay. extension for- Oh, for, for Telescope. For Telescope is mm -hmm, less than mm -hmm. 500 lines. So it incorporates all of these different things- That's uh, insane. Into Telescope with less than 500 lines of code, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So let's let's uh, quit out of this one and let's try some of the, let's try some of the other Telescope COC things that are oh sorry we just open mm -hmm. it back up but I was just saying like I got I got too uh, excited I got too aggressive yeah yeah no no you're 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 good you're good <laughs> I don't think this will work when you're not uh, inside of a file already that has COC like attached um, you can try but I think it'll just say nothing oh, yeah you're yeah. right you're right we're not we don't have any server attached so you need to open up some mm -hmm. file first okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> How much time? Someone asked how much time am I working on Telescope? Uh, I've spent a lot of time, but it's hard to say. Um, okay, so let, we can just see what other things are like attached here for COC. So if you just do sure. the Telescope COC again, mm -hmm. um, and then let's just uh, it just hit tab. I actually don't even know here. Um, let's try workspace symbols. That I think will probably work. Yep. Uh, oh, maybe Go doesn't support workspace symbol. I actually don't know if it does or not. I don't so, know either. Okay, it must not. It must not. So that's a Go please problem. 
Um, so let's let's quit out of this. Let's actually do something um, a little bit different. I'll show you a cool thing you can do with this. So let's say you go inside of like uh, your function sum, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you just do something like for like fmt, right? Fmt dot printf. Uh, I think you'll need to do Here, it. Before. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so nice of you. You're like, I think, I think you should. <laughs> Oh, yeah. okay. Well, oh, dang. So it already adds that automatically, which is cool. But okay, so then let's say instead you actually just, um, let's say now you delete this line. So just escape out and DD, right? You're like, oh man, we got, oh, so you have it on right. Okay. So it automatically does that for, sorry. Um, that's okay. <laughs> if, you press, kind of... if you press you, um, mm -hmm. and just put it back, if you, well, this will just show an example of some of the stuff that this is the easiest one that I know how to trigger and go. If you telescope uh, COC, and then it's probably going to be like code actions or something, or action, file actions, the name of it is. Um, file code actions, yeah. <laughs> so you hit enter on this, and then it literally oh. will ask COC what is available for you in this file. And then, so you can hit enter on either of these. <clears throat> And it will do the go please actions from there, which is removing the extra import. Um, that's just the easiest one that I know how to trigger. There's like other ones like filling in the structs of, uh, or filling in the fields of a struct inside of Go or something like that. Yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah. they have all those kinds of things. You can actually use Telescope to sort of like pick which code action you want to use, which is really mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> um, That's wild. Yeah. So, let me think. Let me think if there's. Do you have any questions thus far? Probably a lot, but. <laughs> mm. Or maybe I don't know. I. It's tough. It's tough because it's like, you know, brand like brand new. I'd probably have yeah. to like work with it for a little bit before I had mm -hmm. like more more questions. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to, like, let me think for a sec about. So someone asked in the chat, this is all good and cute, but who the F has maps for all these commands? You don't have, uh, I have maps for all the ones that I use. I think it's important that you make mnemonics for yourself. So like, I have a lot of my telescope things bound to different like space, mm -hmm. which is like my sort of leader, right? Where you would do something like space and then maybe you have all of your git style actions with space G and then something C for commits T or like F for files. You know, you could have, you could imagine making mnemonics for all of them. Yeah. Um, I, but I mean, some people like to just type them. I think it's uh, also like you have to compare to a bunch of the things that you were doing before. Like if you have to type eight characters to open up a telescope for the particular thing that you wanted, but it saved you a hundred characters of moving around in a file browser. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, that's probably still a good a good trade. So well, there's also like it's tab complete, right? Like it's not that hard yeah. to like you type T. Yeah, you can also hit tab, right, and also, then it's like it'll recommend right. you things. Yeah, you can actually. This tells you all of the telescope things that you currently have as well. So you could actually use telescope to run telescope. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, which is pretty cool. Um. Yeah, I don't know what else what else you want to go into uh, right now. I mean, we have sort of just like thus far, what I've tried to keep it to is just sort of <clears throat> like the the very simplest parts, but it doesn't necessarily show um, maybe like my favorite uh, my favorite things about Telescope, which are like its customizability in terms of reusing. <clears throat> like Lua files sort of all the way down. Yeah. Um, maybe, oh, maybe we can try, we can try one, we can try one thing really quick. We could try doing something like, let's try and just run this. This, you would definitely want to set as like a mapping, uh, but you should just be able to copy and paste and run exactly this in the command line. Whoa, okay. Does Vim have Lua bindings too? Vim has some non-compatible Lua bindings to NeoVim. Um, and I don't think it usually ships with Lua JIT, and not all versions of Vim have it. 
Is there more kind of like Git functionality um, that, that like Telescope incorporates beyond just like beyond being, being able to like search commits? Yeah, so by message? default, Telescope sh ships basically commits, status, files, branches, and you can look at the stash. Um, okay, so what what we just did here, if you're looking at the bottom of your screen, Bash, is uh, see how it has find files? This is sort of like the Lua API for Telescope. It's a bit harder to type, but it's what I would use if I'm making like mappings or things. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I see. We actually yeah. have this concept of like themes. Right, so it's like telescope.themes git drop down and like see how the whole UI is shifted. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of fun because it's like if you have different preferences for how you want to view stuff or you have different things you want to see or maybe you don't even want to see the previewer, you can off for certain commits or like lots of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you can do all these sort of general um, like ideas inside of inside of there. We also have, um, I think this would probably work. If you like escape out of this and run and like open up the last command that you just ran mm -hmm. and change the word drop down at the end to just be IV, IVY, I think that'll probably work. Oh, yeah, cool. so this is like IV That's style. Cool. I like this. Pops up along the bottom. And so each of like the commands, all the UI is completely separated from the concept of each of the different. Uh, you know, like things that are happening, the finder, finding the stuff, the sorter sorting and the preview or previewing, mm -hmm. all those things are separate and like independent of the UI. So you can sort of structure that UI that you want. Mm -hmm. And you can even, if you're, if you want, it's not, I don't know that it's that useful, but it is possible to literally just write your own UI like code to tell telescope where to place the windows, mm -hmm. um, which Ooh, Wayland makes a good point. Have I shown some quick fix? No, I have not yet. Let's actually do um, let's do how we did last time, where we did uh, grep string. So let's do. We can just quit out of this again and do like telescope uh, grep string, and then let's do. Oh shoot! Uh, Sorry, one second. <laughs> I goofed. <clears throat> You're good. You're doing great. Honestly, I'm impressed. You're catching on really fast. Thank you. Sometimes I do things. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it, though. Okay, wait. Just kidding. I was. Okay, wait. I'm. I'm. Bear with me. I'm. I'm trying to. Okay. You're good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so then telescope grep underscore string, and then let's do search like func. Search equals func. Sorry. Mhm. Mm all right, and then press enter. And then see mm -hmm. now you've got all these different results. If you press Control Q. That will send all of these to the quick fix list, which is pretty cool. Most fuzzy finders that are integrated with have this as well. I think has this as well that you can do. But this is really cool because if you wanted to do something like you um, did uh, the command C next, which a lot of people have mapped to something else. I think like prime maps is to control J and control K. Can you uh, see? What, what is that like? So that will move you to the next item in the quick fix list. So if you have like a bunch of things that you want to go check inside of your project, mm -hmm. then you can put them inside of your quick fix list, which is this little window at the bottom, which is built into Vim and NeoVim. Mm -hmm. And you can like move through each one, one at a time with colon C next. Um, or, you know, you might map that to something that Ron does for his. And this is like I'm a really C cool next. way. Like uh, one. One word, one word. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Right, so like if you had some string, which this could be like a regex, right? It could be something more complicated than mm -hmm. fun. You could like search through all of these and then see next, see next, see next as you like examine them and you're keeping your place basically um, in your progression, right? Because the quick fix list keeps where you are no matter where you move. File and number three, number four, number five. You could like take care of a big search in one project or something. Mm -hmm. um, but something that's interesting is all the things sort of support sending to quick fix lists. So if we instead do like uh, the telescope COC and you do something like, uh, I don't know, 
Mm, I, what did, what were one of, what were some of them again? Yeah. <laughs> uh, document symbols or something, right? Okay, so let's yeah. say we do document symbols, <clears throat> and then you press Control Q to send this. This will also put this inside of then your quick fix list, which is pretty cool because like oh. Every you're muted. That. You're, I think your noise gate is like a little high. And when sometimes when you lean back, it like doesn't pick up your voice. Oh, really? Well, it, it hasn't cut out too much or like when you've been saying things that are like. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there we go. I, how is this now? Probably still fine. I just it turned was... off automatically determine input sensitivity, which I didn't know was on. Very cool. You're good. You're good. It, it like it only happens a couple times and it, it was like noise. not not a big deal. Cool. So yeah, so this is like, this is kind of the idea that telescope is like, just this thing built into NeoVim that's supposed, it's supposed to feel like it's built into NeoVim and like reuses NeoVim's features wherever possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so like this control Q sending it to quick fix list, it should work for basically like all the things. Some of them, uh, like don't really make a make a difference. You know, like, would, they wouldn't make any sense. Like, sending all the commits to the quick fix list would be, like, weird. Like, why mm. would you do that? But for, like, files and locations, it works pretty well. So that's pretty cool. So what exactly, like, I'm still, I don't, so, okay, so. So basically with this, this quick fix list is, like, mm -hmm. you can search for some, like, because in this case, uh, did I do funk for this one? Um, uh, in this one, this was not funk. This was uh, COCs, COC. uh, document symbols, right? So, like, okay. even though that wasn't like a, um, it wasn't like a grep search or anything like that, right? COC knew where the lines and columns of things were. So when you said, I want to turn this into quick fix list, it will put them there. So if you press, like, uh, if you go into your... Um, Quick fix list. I don't know if I think you're in the other window right now. I don't actually know. It's uh, hard for me. To know. This one. Okay. Yeah. 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 Is... So if you press like enter on on one of those, mm -hmm. it'll move you to there. Okay. So it and then the you could up. go back. Right. Mm -hmm. And then if you go back into the quick fix list and you move down to like the second one, you can press enter and it'll take you that you there. Do I just can I can I click like Control Q or do I use like the typical like window navigation Control W and then direction? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just normal window okay. navigation will put you there. Because all is always just window navigation, right? So it's like yeah. you can just sort of store all of those things inside of there. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say uh, like learning how to use quick fix list and use it super effectively is like a whole separate topic probably. Prime, I think, has a great video about it actually. Um, if anyone can confirm with a link to Prime's video, I'm pretty sure. I don't have a link uh, to his video, but I have a link to his... <laughs> Oh, nice. Only feet. <laughs> Classic. So, anyways. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. I think... Um, let me try and think... Well, if you have any questions, I can try and answer them right now. Otherwise, I'll try and think if there's any other... Uh, any other cool stuff I can show. I have a few ideas of, of a few small things we might be able to just briefly touch on. But... Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to overwhelm with an insane amount of uh, things in one in one go. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like. <clears throat> hmm. Maybe let me look at this stuff for a second here. Okay. Oh, that one's just going to be worse. Looking at mine will just make it confusing. Well, that's why. So I'm looking at these like telescope defaults. Oh I yeah, that one. We didn't that's copy good. over any of this stuff. And maybe right. it would be like, just because this is kind of like instruction on like how to, you know, get started. Like why, yeah, don't why didn't to... we copy this stuff? Is this, these are just like basically default customizations or? Yeah, that those values are already filled in. So if you like some default behavior, I do not recommend like pasting them in because it's kind of pointless. Uh, oh, to, these are all the defaults. Them. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, and like, if you like the defaults and you want to let them you know, like us keep on improving the defaults, then you probably don't want to paste anything in. It's only to like override anything that you're going to want to add stuff. Um, oh, okay. And then, he, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. So you can kind of like look at all of these and be like, hey, is that like, is this file mm -hmm. sorter? This is something that's default. Like, do I want to change that? Okay. So exactly. it's basically just like a list of things you can refer to and modify mm -hmm. however yep. you want. Okay. Yep. There's, um, 
some interesting stuff. We've, we've, we don't really need to get into it now, but if, if you're interested later, you can also check out playing around with different highlights, which is the, uh, which is the link that I just sent. It's just towards the bottom of that page, basically. So like all of the things in Telescope that get highlighted or like that are drawn on the screen, they all are configurable with normal like highlight things inside of NeoVim. So that's how you would normally do highlights is you mm. just say highlight group and the way that you want to do it. You can just literally do exactly the same for like each aspect, the borders, the prompt, you know, any of them can be uh, customized like that, which is pretty fun. One, one thing that I do want to show <clears throat> before we, um, we can hang out and chat and we can like answer questions from chat as well because people probably have some uh have some questions is I do just want to show one thing that I think is like really cool about telescope which is that when you press a key inside of telescope it just calls a Lua function basically so what we can do is if we go back to your init.vim Oh, sorry, I, I just, one second. No, you're good, you're good, you're good. I know you're answering chat and stuff at the same time. It's it's uh, it's uh always difficult to do all the things at once. So let's go down to the bottom of this file where you have your setup. Mm -hmm. And one of the defaults, one of the like settings that you can do is called mappings. So we can make a new table called mappings uh, inside of this default. So you just need a comma after that prompt prefix stuff. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you can do mappings. And then this is going to be a new table. It's like this for table? Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know that. why. Yeah, I think it's something about your configuration that's saying it to do that inside of Vim code. Yeah. It might, it might be COC that's trying to do it. Um, Maybe. Um, let me think. Is it worth... Okay. Well, I think this is probably actually worth it since that's going to just be so incredibly annoying to you to, like, change anything. Let's... I'll show you how to actually have, like, a separate file that is um, only Lua, and you can call that from your init.vim. Mm -hmm. So let's... Um, you can just stay inside of your current like session, let's make a new folder um, just called Lua right where you are. Mm -hmm. Let me just... Uh, oh yeah, we gotta go back to, uh, yeah. In my config slash new Yep, yep. In config and vim, yep, 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 yep. Mm -hmm. So let's make there a folder called Lua. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. And now let's, um, let's just make a file in here called bashbunny.lua. Cool. Well, I guess that and could that, have been a good opportunity for me to like show how to create a file with. That's okay. Now I don't. It, <laughs> you're learning lots of things. You don't. You don't need to. You know, it's all good. Oh, someone mentioned Devacons. Yes, we should do that before we're done. But I want to show this part first. So, okay. all right, let's um, let's edit your bashbunny.lua file. All right. Right. And then let's let's uh, open up your init.vim like in a split so we can just grab out. Uh, oh, or you can open it up over there either way. Okay, I can... But pretty much we just want to yank all the code that you have inside of that Lua um, EOF section there inside of that Lua here docs. We're going to put that inside of your bashbunny.lua. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I think it's just. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Alright. So, uh, oh yeah, and I need to probably bring this to the end of the file. Yep. Okay. And so we can just delete all this code out and move it into the other side. Oh, like all of the, the stuff that's within like the EOF yep. mm -hmm. stuff? Okay. This way you can just not have to worry that it's like doing dumb stuff, basically. Mm-hmm. And then you'll want to just delete that uh, EOF at the end of the file. Perfect. And then what we can do in your init.vim is we can just write um, Lua. Yep, perfect, okay. perfect. Lua and then require. Require is like Lua's way of say load a module. Inside of there, just do a string and say bash bunny. 
So it will find a file named bashbunny.lua somewhere in your like runtime path, which is just like where NeoVim loads stuff up. And by putting something, uh, don't put a comment at the end of this line because it'll try and execute it all inside of Lua. It'll be oh, confusing. Okay, okay. Yep, yeah, you'll be like, why is this mm. broken? Um, <laughs> But so this is a way that you can sort of like save Lua files and they will exist in other places. Um, you want to make sure that uh, you just give them a kind of unique name. Don't call them like, you know, config or something because someone else might also have a file named config, <laughs> mm. um, which will which won't work. So but anyway, so now you can put basically as much Lua code as you want inside of this bash bunny file. And it, you do, it doesn't matter that uh, <laughs> like it, it, it shouldn't do that weird thing anymore where now when you make a new line, it puts backslashes all over the place. <laughs> okay, cool. All know, right, so... Like, I only half understand what my what my uh, config is doing, uh, so like, this is great. Yeah, my guess would it's some COC thing. So in, mm -hmm. in general, just as a side note, inside of Vim script code, it doesn't like new lines. You have to escape and say, oh, I'm continuing the line from before. That's why you're getting all those. Oh, I see. Yeah, characters. that makes sense. So, so it's like, it makes sense inside of him, but it just doesn't for some reason know that you're inside of a piece of Lua code inside of him. You know what I mean? So mm. that's sort of, that's sort of a side point. So let's go back to what we were attempting to do before uh, it got confused, which is where in mappings here, um, the way that this mappings table works is that it does a couple of sort of, uh, I would say, sort of like conveniences for you as the developer, which is all you have to do is you make another table called, you can just say like I. So this table will just be called I and then equals. And so these will be insert mode mappings. Okay, so it's going to only load up these mappings inside of Telescope for you. Okay. okay, so we can make a new table. Okay. And then uh, there's there's one sort of confusing bit. Some characters are not acceptable to be keys, like just normally. Like it doesn't make sense if you could type like C minus T or something like that. Like it doesn't know what to do with the minus, like I just sent it Twitch chat. So to make like a, a, a key that has like a complicated string, mm -hmm. you need to do something like uh, let's do control, um, I don't know, A or something like this. You'd have to do it like this, which is bracket, and then say inside inside of the bracket is just an expression. So you just oh, do I bracket see. and then like a string. That gets stored as the key now. Does that make sense? Uh, that gets stored as, wait, I thought I was the key. Uh, I is a key, but now we've made another table. Oh, right, I see. So okay, okay. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a key in the table, and then we're going to... Okay, okay. Yep, we're going to set it equal to something. Since mm -hmm. I'm also, like, I'm, I'm fairly new to, like, NeoVim, so when I do something like this, CA, is that control A? Yep, that's control okay. A. Exactly right. Yep. So this is basically telling Telescope, hey, when I press control A in insert mode, I would like you to do something. So for right now, we'll just do the, like, simplest, simplest possible example, which mm -hmm. would be you just write the word function. So that's like, that's how you declare functions are starting. You can have anonymous functions in Lua. Um, and then you need to, to yep. Um, there's no brackets. They, the function ends with the keyword end. So it's function, oh, okay. parenthesis, parenthesis, and then end. We'll like end that function. And inside of there, we can just do something like print, and let's just say, hi or you know shout out to Aegean, you know you know anything like that okay cool all right so now if we uh re if we oh so this will be a little bit confusing because you're in a lua file now you don't source anymore instead you need to say lua file percent uh lua file space percent as the um command just like how we do source for Vim script code, you can do Lua file percent to re-execute this file um, as a Lua file. That's all one word, right? Like it's all together? Yeah, Lua file and then space percent will work. Okay. <clears throat> yep, and then you can hit enter and that should run this. And so now you should be able to open up telescope again. Let's just open up like uh, find files or whatever. It doesn't even matter. You know, it's just whatever. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, if we did this right after we do like find files, yep. And you press Control A. Hopefully, it should. Oh, it did. Print. He just cool. 
Okay, so then we can just press escape, escape to get out of here or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, but see, so this, this is like, this is the part that gets me very excited about uh, telescope as compared to some of like the other fuzzy finders. Once again, I'll just reiterate for chat since some people on the internet don't know how to say that two things are good at the same time. FCF mm -hmm. is very cool and I like it and I've used it before um, and it's a really awesome thing and Unigoon is awesome plugin maker, etc. Um, but what like is very exciting for me about this is like it's Lua sort of like from the top to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Right. And which means that like you can interact along the way just by writing more Lua code and they're all sort of like completely introspectable with each other, right? So what I'll what I'll show you here is let's do I'll just paste you something really quick. Okay. Um because uh, otherwise it'll be I think a little bit too hard to do. So let's do something like Actually, um, hmm, how do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? Uh, probably, well, I guess the easiest way is, I think we have some examples. Beautiful, we do have some examples. Let me see if I've got, uh, oh, I, I want to do this. Okay, well, this could use this could use an update in the docs. This could use an update in the docs. I'll, I'll just type this above. So the first thing you want to say is make something like require telescope.actions.set, I think will work like this. You'll paste this at the top of the file. This, uh, what we have here um, is basically like it. So we learned what require does, right? Which is kind of like it loads a module. Mm -hmm. And you can basically nest modules by putting periods in the name. So this is actually, I have a file somewhere called telescope. Inside of there, there's like an actions folder. Inside of there, there's a file named set.lua. Right, so telescope dot action stuff. What? Can I comment in here so that like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, two dashes or yeah, two um, not slat. Yep, yeah, perfect. Okay, so. Yeah, so we'll just do a little bit of Lua learning as we go. If you get confused, just stop me because uh, Lua's uh, once you sort of get the hang of it, it's a relatively small language, but there's some sort of interesting bits at the uh, beginning to figure out. Teach us this correct, so it would be a telescope file with action and set, net, like where set is nested within action, like function. Uh, so actually, it's like there's a file. So somewhere on your computer in the runtime path, wherever plug installs for you, mm -hmm. there's a, there's a file inside of a Lua folder. So NeoVim always looks for things inside of Lua folders, pretty much, right? Okay, that's how we put Lua slash bash bunny dot Lua, and you could just do require bash bunny, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a file somewhere on your computer that's lua slash telescope slash actions slash set dot lua. So that's how you can like basically modularize uh, the the code that way. I see. Okay. Oh, and shoot, I meant to say uh, we should actually do state for both of these instead of set. Uh, both of them are actually correct. One thing you could do, want to do a cool trick? Yeah, if you do colon s. Mm-hmm. Slash. Oh, wait, together? Uh, all, all set. Pardon? Yeah, yeah, so then S-E-T, like set, right? Okay. Uh, and then slash again. And then do state. And then slash G for do it all the ones on this line. Enter. Okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me, I'm just going to. So S means substitute. I feel like this would be very helpful for me to remember. Okay. Yeah, this is, I use this one all the time. And then it changed all the ones on that line, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Colty, uh, did uh, did Teach break out? Do you guys need him to repeat what he said? Oh, did uh, oh did I drop? You're you're fine now, but like I think, okay. yeah. So basically, no, you're good. Okay, okay, just checking. Okay. Um. Yeah. Go ahead, Bash. <laughs> It just repeated you. Okay, fair. I should have. I should have expected that my chat was just trolling. Um, okay, so go ahead. What am I doing to go ahead? Uh, do the like okay. source the. Oh well, yeah, I thought you had. A, I thought you had a question about what we just did. Uh no, just the. It was just about the the telescope action state. I think. Ah okay, cool. So now we have this uh, action state, and you can read 
like about what uh, this like what this does if you want in the help docs. But for now, I'll just give you the one that's um, the like exciting bit is we can do something like this inside of our function. I will just uh, type this in here so that you and I'll explain what these do. This Thanks should hopefully on. work. It's it's hard to type in Twitch chat. Um, So if you put this inside of the function that we have like on line seven. Okay. I try, hopefully I typed that all right. I'll tell you if once we have it in there. Line seven, all right. Yeah, so we can just like make an oh. Uh, oh. inside, okay, in inside the function. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And Lua is like white space agnostic, so it doesn't matter, you know, you can do new lines and everything, not indented, it doesn't care. Uh, action state docket selected entry. Yeah. Uh, someone asked, why do we need action state? Action state is like basically an API contract that I, as the telescope author, make with our consumers to say, uh, here's the functions that I promise I will make sure keep working. <laughs> right? So it doesn't matter how much we change the internal implementation of telescope. Action state dot get selected entry will always give you the selected entry like currently in telescope. Doesn't matter how we change the like the implementation, if we store it as a list or a map or as a linked list or whatever, it doesn't matter. This is just our way of like doing that and it makes it easy for me to keep that promise basically. Mm -hmm. um, so now we can just Lua file this again to re-execute this file. So Lua file percent and then we can run telescope find files and hopefully, um, if we do control A, we should get something cool printed out. Control A. Oh. So, th so, so this is just like a fancy way that it has printed oh. out um, some bonus stuff. But the cool bits about it um, are that you can tell it's a Lua table. Mm -hmm. It has your entry, which is <clears throat> bashbunny.lua. It even stores meta tables, which you don't need to know a bunch about. But basically, it's like. Uh, how sort of like you could implement classes or special behavior. Mm -hmm. So this is like if you put into telescope uh, something that stores functions and like basically like class inheritance style things, all of these things, right? Mm -hmm. That like still exists by the time you get to the end of telescope, mm -hmm. which is really cool because it makes it like you can store references to functions and you can filter those and then you could like do something with that function, right? Uh, as opposed to like other fuzzy finders, this may not seem that exciting, but like most other fuzzy finders, you need to basically like pipe stuff to the fuzzy finder, which usually and like almost inevitably means turning it into text. Uh -huh. And like when you turn it into text, you lose your functions, right? There's no way to just be like, oh, remember this Lua function that we had before? Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't that doesn't work. So that's why this is like pretty exciting. Why one of my favorite parts about telescope is like you can continue to extend like really easily without having to make the worries that you like normally do for other kinds of fuzzy finders because it just like literally keeps the object uh, around, which is cool. <clears throat> Very cool. Yeah. Um, so this is this is sort of all to say basically like that Lua function gets executed when you do it and you get the entry back that you put in, uh, which is uh, a way that you can sort of make it do anything, mm -hmm. uh, which is, which I think is cool. <clears throat> do you have any questions about that? And, and maybe a little bit too uh, sort of like, I don't know, obscure, but it's just one of my favorite things about it. So I had to go over it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I don't, um, honestly, like, I feel like I don't know how to actually, like, apply this yet. Like, I don't yeah. know when I would use it. Yeah. Um, it's probably one of those things, like, you did a, you did a, like, a telescope walkthrough, I remember, like, a couple, maybe, mm -hmm. even, like, f not February, March, maybe? Yeah, probably something like that, yeah. Um, first of all, is that on your YouTube? I think, I think it probably is, yeah. Okay. Because, like, in that one, do you go kind of, like, more in depth of, like, covering all of the functionality that that's kind of available and then that way we can kind of like poke around with it and like see where we can apply it and 
Yeah, it just sort of depends on, like, what aspect you want to go into, because, you know, there's, like, a, a lot going on. Um, mm -hmm. But this was just to sort of show, like, once you start going down the rabbit hole of, like, playing with it, you could keep on doing more things. Uh, mm -hmm. I can give you an example of, like, when you might want to use this, um, like, feature. Like, let's say you have a list of, uh, like, directory names that you think are important to you, right? Like... You know, you've got your like config directory, you've got your Go projects, and you've got your like node thing or whatever, right? And you have like mm -hmm. those three those three lists. Let's say um, what you wanted to do with those was to be able to implement like something that would just switch your NeoVim current working directory into those spots. Right? So you just have basically a list of names okay. and you would like to switch to that directory. What you could do is like with what we just did, right? So if you like press escape a couple times and get out of like this current view, so we're looking at the looking at the file again. Mm -hmm. Instead of just like printing what the current working directory is here, which is what we did, you could do something like uh, we don't need to go over the actual code. We'll just say what the pseudo code of what we need to do, which would just be like vim dot set current working directory equals selected entry dot working directory. So you could have your own keyboard shortcut to like quickly switch between your different workspaces Whoa. just based on what you're doing. And you didn't have to like do anything crazy. It was literally just writing a function. The only thing that's different about it is you just need to grab the current selected thing. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's exactly the same code that you would normally use to switch directories, right? Does that make sense? Uh, yes, if I switch directories. Yeah, I, I will. The reason I bring it up is because I noticed like a lot you I'm sort sure. of like close out of the oven and then you move to a completely different spot and then open it again. Yeah. But you could like do something that just switches your current working directory by doing like set uh, working directory equals blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter about the actual code. Mm -hmm. I'm just, that's more of like an example of that could be something that's particular to your use case um, where you might want to write your own little like mapping to make that happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> That's actually, um, like, that would actually be super useful because I feel like generally on stream, there are only, like, a few different directories that I need to work in, and it can right. be kind of a pain in the ass to, like, yeah, go back to home, type out the whole, like, path right. and everything. Mm -hmm. So if I could do a shortcut for that, that would be awesome. Right. And so we internally use, like, this style of thing to implement all of the actions that happen, right? So, like, when you press Control n and Control p mm -hmm. and it moves the selection up and down, that is literally just other Lua functions being composed back through this, like, framework. So it's just, like, a, that's, that's what I sort of like a, about it. Um, someone mentioned that we should set up Devicons, which is a good point. Yeah. We need to make it prettier. We need to make telescope just a little prettier so what we need to do for that um do you know if you have like oh you probably do because and with nurture you've got like a bunch of uh cool icons right so you have some font that supports your fun icons <clears throat> yeah okay great I so have, i uh, think what is it nerd firamano nerd, like nerd, nerd font nice Nice. So I think, uh, if I recall, all you have to do is literally just install this plugin that I just put in here, and then Telescope will just determine that you have this plugin and be like, oh, cool, thanks for uh, thanks for installing this thing. We can add pretty icons now, which is fun. Oh, you want to see something cool? Telescope, and then do uh, space current. Uh, and then if you hit tab, I think it'll do it. Current buffer fuzzy find. Mm -hmm. mm, you're going to like this one. So just start typing stuff that you kind of want to search for. Oh, wild. So if you just type like telescope, here's all the ones that have telescope on this line. You can just press enter and you'll go to that line in your current buffer. Nice. And if you have like, if you, if the screen were wider, it would show you preview of the code around it as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Let me, let me try that again. Oh yeah, you're right. Oh my God. That is cool. Okay. Yeah. That um, is cool. Th this is an example of one that like, it looks a little bit goofy right now because, uh, the things are kind of like backwards, like the lines go reversed of the order that you would expect. Mm -hmm. Um, 
we can we can actually we have like a way to make it not be that. Um, I don't, but I don't know if you if you want, we can I can show you how to like make that be different, I guess, <laughs> um, for you so that like the lines go in the same order as your file. Like that one, I always feel like it's weird if you have it where it sorts in reverse because like when you're looking at the page. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't even know if I'm making sense. Like line one is lower than line two in the layout that, that you have right now. In when I when I do telescope or like in general? Yeah, just 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 for that telescope, current buffer fuzzy find. Oh yeah, like, I did notice that actually, because I was looking at yeah. it and I was like, huh. It's looking Yeah, it's kinda of, it's, it's like, kinda of weird. Yeah, bottom <laughs> Yeah, it's it's backwards. Yeah. Okay. So let's first let's first get make sure that the Davicons thing uh, gets like uh, enabled, and then so we'll just need to plug install and then probably just restart uh, the of them just to be safe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now if you do like find files again. Oops. Okay, and files. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can just hit enter is good. Okay, right, cool. Yay, we have some oh, little cute. icons next to them. Well, They're pretty cute. Wait, and is Lua, is that a bomb? Uh, it's a moon, I think. Oh, I see. It's it like of... a, yeah, it does look like a bomb, though. <laughs> in, a, in a fun way. Yeah. In like a, a cartoon animated fun way. So, yeah, so now you've got little you got little icons next to them, and that's uh, that's, and so, that's cute. cute. so that is cute. Yeah. We like we like we like that. Agreed, agreed. Lua means moon. Okay, well that makes sense. Yes, in Portuguese, <laughs> which is it was made in Brazil. Oh really? Lua, I didn't know what? that. Yep, it has a pretty interesting backstory. Uh, actually, like it was kind of a conglomeration of two different languages that they made in Brazil at a time where like the Brazilian government didn't really let Brazilian people use technology from other countries so they like had to make a bunch of their own stuff and then they came up with lua it's a very cool like backstory mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. that is very um, cool okay cool let's let's do an example of how we could configure a particular sort of uh telescope um a particular telescope we call them pickers. That's like when the whole thing, the picker is a combination of the finder, sorter, previewer, and like your associated mappings and stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, the picker is like when you open it up and it's the whole thing. Let's set one up with a mapping for your current buffer fuzzy find. Um, and we'll configure the setup a little bit for it so that you uh, don't have like that reverse action happening. Right. So let's just go like to the bottom of your init.vim. Sorry, one sec. I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to respond to this real quick. Um, yeah, you're good. No worries. We're just hanging out. Okay. Yeah, just because there's like some specific questions that are being asked, and I'm like, it's probably easier to answer off stream. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, all right, all right. And sorry, what what am I doing? So let's go to the bottom of your init.vim again. Okay. And we're just gonna add down here a mapping that will um, let you sort of search your current buffer for stuff, right? So I don't know what what would you uh, want to do for this. I don't know what your current like. <clears throat> how you would think about searching like the current file uh, for something. Um, I would usually use slash and then type in the word and then go like next. Maybe like, do you have anything currently mapped to control slash? No, I don't think so. I think your terminal should be able to tell that you're typing control slash. It might be, I think I think it'll be fine. We, we can test it, we can test it. Okay, and then so, we do... Yep. So then let's do, so you'll need, uh, after that, we'll put a space. Oh, space. I yep. don't actually, I've never, I've actually never remapped anything with new. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I don't okay. know how so, to do it. <laughs> so what happens when you do uh, 
a remap is it's going to literally type out these characters mm -hmm. uh, inside of itself. So you you first will want to put a colon in front of telescope because it's going to be like you're literally typing colon telescope, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can do current buffer fuzzy find, I think is the current underscore buffer underscore fuzzy underscore find, hopefully, let me make sure. <laughs> current underscore buffer underscore fuzzy underscore find yeah okay okay and then you need to put a left bracket or sorry not a left bracket a left like a less than sign cr and then uh right of that uh yeah like a yep perfect like this? that means uh carriage return or enter in the carriage colloquy return. yeah 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 okay um so what this does is it will be it's effectively saying okay i will literally do colon telescope current buffer fuzzy find right and then uh it'll run that okay mm -hmm. cool so now if you do something like um you can just source this file if you want again so just source mm -hmm. percent and now if you do control slash hopefully i don't know if it's gonna do it it doesn't seem to okay uh, it may not uh, no, control slash. So can you press um, O to go into insert mode for me? <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then press control V. This should send you into like, uh, yep. And then now do control slash. OK, so you need to put uh, C dash underscore. I guess it thinks that it's underscore. Oh, I see. OK. Oh, I see. I, I, at least that's, and then no, no, uh, slash after that. It'll oh, be whoops, confused. that's my bad, my bad. You're good, you're good, you're good. Totally good, totally good. Uh, and then we'll do <clears throat> source again, and then see control slash. Oh, there you go, okay. Woo Beautiful. Okay, so now it's like, okay, now, and any time, right, this is where it starts to get quite exciting, thinking about how you could start sort of integrating um <clears throat> telescope into your workflows like okay so now anytime you want you can press control slash and boom you're fuzzy finding over the current file right oh my God, I'm excited. but what we okay. want to do mm -hmm. is we want to change this so that it is not like sorted kind of reverse because that's weird and confusing when you look <laughs> at it so we get to press escape and get back get out of this right okay um so the way that we can do this um First, we'll do it, we'll continue the way that we're doing, and then I'm going to show you sort of the translated uh, Lua way, which is the way that you'll want to start thinking about how to do it um, as you sort of get more involved with Telescope. Because so the right way? It, well, you, well, they're both right, but the <laughs> Lua one will just let you configure things like more. This I, one is like at some point limited. But I just yes, enjoy triggering chat by saying, by yeah. like, expressing something that is completely subjective as a state as like a fact um because it's funny well it is the and, right way if it's the way you do it bash we're all just gonna follow you okay obviously. perfect perfect you know, that, that, obviously. that's kind of yeah that's what i thought mm -hmm. all right so okay what we can do is we can actually say before that cr at the end of the line yeah we can change uh we'll only have to change um change one one thing which should be let me just make sure that i do this correctly we should say sorting underscore strategy and then let's say equals um and then i think it should be descending i always actually get them mixed up even though i wrote them <laughs> okay so uh, now we can just it. source again and then we can try the same thing okay Okay, so I think it must be ascending. I think I literally think I might have written it backwards, but then it just <laughs> is the way that it is now, and so then it's too confusing. Let's just try ascending instead. I literally don't. I can never remember. I have to just. I I don't know what it is. It's just a mental block for me about which one is which. What do you mean? It's super intuitive. Did I wait? Uh, oh, I don't think you sourced the file. It's still oh, you're right. You're right. Wow, you're right. You're right. Thank you. Thank you, Teach. No problem, no problem, no problem. Okay, there you go. Okay, see, so now it's got the stuff at the top, right? And it's going to go down. But I sometimes find it a little weird if I'm doing a sending strategy. Mm -hmm. um, we can actually move where the prompt is if you want. We don't have to, but you could actually move the top prompt to be above the results. 
um, we can just do it quick. I can show you how that works, and yeah, then sure, you can decide what. Yeah. So where you would do that is you would say um, prompt underscore position, similar to exactly how we just did the sorting strategy, prompt underscore position. And then you can, for that, you can say equals uh, top. Okay. Oops, what? Hello? Okay. We did a thing. We did the... Ooh, nice. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So Ooh, now it's like as so you're testing, like let's say you type telescope right mm -hmm. you start up your telescope now it'll be like it'll filter them down um as you go and they'll sort of like squish up to the top rather than squishing down to the to the bottom was then there there was a like a format equals um what was it uh like ivy? ivy or something ivy? Like that. yeah so i think if you do theme equals ivy oh, it theme. might work from here that is, I don't remember if we actually finished that feature or not. Otherwise, we'd have to do it slightly uh, differently than than this. But that's okay, because that would lead us perfectly into our next section if this doesn't work. Or if it doesn't, uh, you didn't source again. Oh, yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm too excited, okay? I, I, I know. I, I'm, I'm too excited. Know. Like, let me just see. Uh, I, okay, I yeah. So Okay, cool. So I wasn't sure that that was going to work, because it would be a little bit weird. So let's actually <laughs> switch this. Now to the other way of doing this, all telescope pickers that are built in can effectively be called in this way, which is where you have something like, um, oh, I think it theme works when it might be customer drop down. Ah, Rocker, okay, that's good to know. Rocker Boo, the one who created the very first theme, the one who created the very first theme, um, this is the way, I'll paste one in, this is one of the ones from the examples. And you'll see what I just pasted in there. No remap, leader F, that, that part doesn't really matter. But actually what happens now is this idea of Lua, require. Um, well, maybe we should just, we can oh, just I write see. this. So I can put this in my, in my Lua file. Uh, you have, no, so this one is still just a remap. You'll put it still in, in this file. But where you're telling Neo oh, him okay. is basically um, execute this Lua for me. So let's, let's just move to a new line here mm -hmm. and we'll just we'll just do exactly the same mapping no remap you know control um <clears throat> oh sorry oh, we'll just start a completely actually... fresh new fresh new line yeah okay okay so get rid of the existing one and then um change this to the what we had yeah let's yeah let's just do c dash underscore for this one and we're just going to sort of write out you know what we would do delete those f's f's in the chat <laughs> um, and then you want a space between the um, the like the two between the, the command and the thing the, before yeah. it. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, I had no idea you needed a space there. I did not know. Yes, it's uh, white space sensitive because it's like a little domain specific language basically for mapping. Huh. So now instead of saying dot find files towards the end of this line, mm -hmm. <clears throat> we're actually going to say current buffer fuzzy find. So you'll you'll see a little pattern as we go as we go through here, which is that okay. So basically, before you just put telescope at the beginning and then the name of something. Now mm -hmm. what you need to do is basically say require telescope dot built in because this is Lua, so it's saying mm -hmm. hey, load up the built in things from telescope and then mm -hmm. call the function current buffer fuzzy find. Okay, does that make sense? Do you see where see where we're going with that? Mm -hmm. So now, inside of the two parentheses, we can make a new table, which is going to have basically the configuration items that we want. So inside of there, we'll do our like left, left curly um, inside of the parentheses inside at the, the end. Fuzzy of fine? The yep. Because mm -hmm. okay. these are kind of like parameters that we're passing Wait, to right, here. Sorry. Yep. Uh, oh no, sorry. Oh, no. Curly, curly. Curly brace. Okay, yep. sorry. <laughs> I got confused. <laughs> So now you can do sorting strategy equals, and then you'll need quotes now because this is actually Lua ascending. Mm -hmm. And then we can do a comma after the ascending quotes, right? And we can just make another key here, which is prompt position uh, equals top. And is this uh, quotes as well around top? Yep. So now if we resource this file and you do control slash, <clears throat> Okay. 
See, so now we're like, okay, now we've gotten back it's to exactly the, yeah. the setup that we had before, which is pretty cool, right? Because that's basically like, okay, now we're right back to where we were, but now we're calling it directly from Lua. Mm -hmm. um, Waylon asks why command versus colon. Uh, yeah. You can read help command for that, but the short of it is it's just a way of uh, not, it doesn't actually leave um, normal mode. So it won't fire like some bonus auto commands and stuff. It doesn't super matter. I just find it a little bit nicer. And that's why we recommend it in the <clears throat> um, readme. Mm -hmm. Okay, the so our event I never knew I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, so remember how before we had something where we did basically like we had require telescope dot themes mm -hmm. dot get ivy like this. Mm -hmm. um, so now. Oh, so now I can add that. Yep. So now what we're gonna do, which is this is uh, sort of like I think it's a nifty little way that this works is inside of the current buffer fuzzy find where you currently have that table, mm -hmm. right? You can actually pass this table to require telescope.themes.getiv and then it will override uh, the, like, the defaults of that theme. In this case though, um, I actually don't know that you super like need to override them because you kind of just want to use the exact defaults of Ivy, mm -hmm. um, which happen to be these same ones. So it doesn't it doesn't super matter. So you can just actually delete the table that we just added in here, or you can like comment out this line to save it for your information, you know, and then we can do it on a new line. Totally good either way. I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna do that. I'm I'm preserving everything that you've touched in my Vim config. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Naturally. We're going to NFT that later. <laughs> <laughs> Get a frame it and put it on my wall. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we can delete that table inside, which just has the sorting strategy and all and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And we can just put, instead of the table, we can put require telescope.themes.getivy, just like we I uh, pasted into the, into the chat. I know I could copy it, but I'm just... No, you're good. It's good. Typing it makes you, you remember it better, I think. Um, there's, a, there's a little thing here. Yep. Okay, perfect. So let's... I don't, I think this will work, hopefully. Okay. So if you source this file again, and then we, uh, and then we do the control slash. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Does that look great? Uh, yeah, so it it does actually work nice. So now it's like if you started typing telescope or whatever, right? It's going to act like it's filtering down your current file. Mm -hmm. And then you could just press enter and then you can go there. Or you could even press like control V, which will split it vertically. And then it's like you could keep your current spot in your file and you pop out that other bad boy, you know, in a new oh, split. Oh, I which see. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. So my file yeah. that I was just working on is on the right right now and then... What I just clicked yeah. on from the uh, fuzzy finder is on the left. Yep. Exactly. I did control, control V. Is that what I did? Yeah. So there's a list of all the default mappings that we have um, that we have as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's uh, yeah. There you go. So that's like. So that's why I say like, okay, once you start doing the stuff in Lua, I think it starts working a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And then, let's move. If, do you have time? I don't want to take up your whole I'm, day. No, you... I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I have. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm good. All right. So let's um, let's let's move one step. I think uh, further than where we were before, which is now we'll open up your Bash Bunny file again. Okay. One second. Your Bash I just want to copy. I, I want to try. Um, if you don't mind, I'm just. Oh gonna yeah. Like, oh no. Wonderful. Yes. Use this. Try more. That's good. This is how I do tutorials too, and then chat's like, "What?" And I'm like, "Yep." I just don't follow tutorials <laughs> directly. <laughs> like I'm just like this seems interesting. Let's try it. Okay. Uh, okay. And then let's source. Nice. Yeah, I think this won't make a difference because. Um, oh, I think you have one. Do you have one too many uh, closing parentheses there? Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. The hard stuff that gets us, you know. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, so it should be the same basically because by default this theme chooses prompt position top mm -hmm. and sorting ascending. But okay, if you cool. wanted to like kind of have it be sort of 
different, you could actually do prompt position equals bottom, mm -hmm. and it will, which hopefully will work. Hopefully I programmed this one right, because I just added Ivy like last week, so it's not super obvious whether it'll work or not, but we'll see. I'm good at breaking things, so like I'll let you know. Yeah. Oh, maybe it just overrides it no matter what. I think I might actually force it to be the case for Ivy. Ah, okay. Fine. I see That's how it is, me. Teach. You're just gonna, just gonna boss me, me around. I, That's on me. I see you, I see you. <laughs> all right, okay, that's on me. So I'll fix that later for you, Bash. Don't worry, but <laughs> thank you. Can you can you rename it to Bash? Yeah, Bash I'll Bunny? rename the theme to Bash Bunny okay, perfect, as well. Perfect. Obviously. All right, so now we're gonna sort of take this one one step a little bit uh, further than before, which is that you're going to write the um, the like telescope thing that you want to run, you're going to actually write that part in Lua. Okay? Okay. So I'll go into so, that so like, Lua directory? Yeah. Yeah, you, or you can just edit it from, from here is fine, whatever. And then Lua slash bash bunny is good. <laughs> Bear with me. Sure complete or no? Does like it not tab complete? Uh, probably Did does. Tab complete with files? I don't know. All right, so, so so this part is uh, is pretty cool. So Lua files, mm -hmm. uh, at, you know how like in JavaScript, at least you used to do this, like at the end of a JavaScript file, you'd like uh, run, uh, or you'd like return something basically, and that's how you'd like export something out of a module. I don't know if yeah. you're familiar with that. That's yeah. like older school JavaScript. Lua does exactly the same thing. So at the end of a file, mm -hmm. uh, in Lua, you can just type return. Uh, so like we can just go to the bottom of this file and return, and we can return like a table. So you can do, you know, return. We'll just make our own, yep, perfect, like mappings or something like that. And so just above this, let's make a new table. So to do that, you'll say something like local. Local is the way that you say that a variable's not global in Lua. Mm -hmm. By default, things are global. It's an interesting choice, but whatever. Let's let's actually just call it mappings because that's what we're gonna return. Okay, but I already have like a mappings under defaults. Is that okay? Ah, uh, that's just a key. That's not a variable. So inside oh, of a table. I see. Okay. Yep. okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that that's a great question. Yeah, inside of the, there's no, those are not variables. Those are just uh, keys. Okay. So now we can actually uh, set certain like mappings equal to different things um let's actually the way that i prefer that i usually write this instead is like let's go to like line 18. Okay. you can just leave the fact that this table is like open or whatever and just do something like uh, mappings dot um cur buff or something like that doesn't really matter you can call it whatever you want cur buff it doesn't doesn't matter and then you can say uh equals <clears throat> And let's make this into a function. It doesn't have to take any arguments, so just function, uh, parent, parent, and then like you can do new line and then end. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we can just write stuff inside of here, and this will be a function. And then we can uh, basically like we can call telescope from inside of this function, right? So what we want to start with is if you like do a split and just open up your init.vim, we can okay. just copy the exact thing that we had mapped before. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I think so. So you can do, okay. So you like, can just I copy can have this, this yeah, this exact line, I can just copy yep. to Lua. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so all the stuff that happens after that, like Lua, here, so see how it says like command and then Lua. We just want to delete all the stuff that comes before that. Before Lua. That's, uh, yep. Okay. We're gonna do. We'll get to how we can actually map it in a second, and we actually want to delete the Lua part oh, okay. as well. Yep. Cool. So now, this is um, this is like oh yeah, we don't need that CR anymore either, right? Because that's like a key press. Lua doesn't understand key presses. <laughs> okay. So now we can like put this on multiple lines and stuff like that, so we can actually read the code, which is, <laughs> which is nice. You know what I mean? So like, uh, yeah, because we wanted to do this with. Yeah, I think this is okay. This is good. 
How do I how do I put it on multiple lines? How do I make this uh, more so, readable? Yeah, um, I would probably go to after you call current buffer fuzzy find. Let's where we have that require telescope dot themes. Let's delete sort of like all the stuff that's inside of those parentheses. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, oh, we probably should um, close your window on the left. Oh yeah, so you're that right. We you're can, right. Because I think we're blocking like all the all the code. Can't I do that? Is that fine? Okay. Uh, I just yeah, that, that, them. Yeah, that's perfect. Cool. So so now that we're actually in Lua, we can you know we can even do something where if you take the code that's inside of the current buffer fuzzy find stuff here, mm -hmm. um, you can just store that as a variable. So like you could take uh, all of the stuff after current buffer fuzzy find the arguments getting passed there. So that next require. Uh, I next don't know if I'm next require. Sense. Okay. Yeah, the second require on the line. You can mm -hmm. like delete, you know, everything to the end of the line, uh, and then move that up, sort of before. Move that and up we... before. Oh, I see. Okay. I yeah, into a new variable, so that it doesn't have to all be like sitting inside of one long, terrible, and hard to read uh, line. <laughs> <laughs> so I delete that. Yep. Make this like something useful. Mm -hmm. yep, 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 yep. Um, and then I actually just do a new line with the stuff that I deleted. Yeah, we'll move it somewhere else. So then let's do something like local opts equals this, OPTS. You know, oh, like, like outside options. of, uh, inside this? Uh, still inside the function. We'll move okay. it above uh, line 19 before. Yep. Okay. Yep. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, you'll need to, we have one too many parentheses on that line. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Where am I? Hello? Okay. Wait. Don't worry me. I'm nice. that fingering. <laughs> yep. And then we just passed um, like opt into current buffer fuzzy find on the next line. Right. So we made a new variable opt. We're just going to pass that to current buffer fuzzy find. Does that make sense? Um, we got opt and we're going to pass that to the current buzz buffer fuzzy find. Yes, that makes sense. So I can put that in here and I can put opt here. Beautiful, right? So now it's like, oh, okay, now I could actually, you know, we could start configuring tons of things about this. And it's like a lot easier for us to be, um, it's like a lot easier to read and to configure, right? Like if you wanted to add custom mappings to just this one, you can do that. We were not going to necessarily get into like how to, <laughs> like how to do that uh, today, because that would be like a lot, but it's very similar to the concept that we have for defaults. Um, but yeah, so now you have a mapping. It's called curbuff. So mm -hmm. we need some way basically to execute this mapping, right? So right now this is just going to do exactly the same as uh, the previous thing that we did. Oh, sorry. Before we go, we should change bottom back to top uh, because bottom doesn't do anything, and you'll be confused if I fix the bug. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, can I just de delete that because those are the yeah, defaults? Yeah, you can even just delete it if you don't care. You can delete okay. all the all the stuff there, yeah. Okay. Nice. Perfect. Okay, so now if we go back to your init.vim. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, right. I have you... that in a buffer, yeah. Mm -hmm. You could do telescope buffers even, which is pretty cool. And it'll let you fuzzy find over your current buffers. Telescope. And pick which one you want to go to. Oh, cool. I keep trying to like do the like, HJKL. To, yeah, you like, can do that if you go out to normal mode, but otherwise you can just do control and control. Oh, because I'm in insert mode. Oh, mm -hmm. yep. I see. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's all just actually like, you know, all just like you're actually in NeoVim. That's kind of the point because it is. It's not a. It's not in some external program. So then you can just press enter and you'll go edit this buffer where you were before. And um, teach. Somebody asked, um, yep. is there a command or some way to look up all the telescope themes, or is that? Uh, only I should have them actually documented. Help. Okay. Uh, help telescope. Dot themes. Boom. They're in help telescope dot themes. You can check them out there. I don't have a dynamic okay. way to look them up yet, though. Help. Okay. So telescope has a growing library of. Uh, help docs it's not uh it's not as good as i want it to be but it we're getting it better i built some cool tools that uh, allow us to make it better over time but anyways mm -hmm. 
So now what we can do, Bash, that's pretty cool, is we can make a new... Uh, yeah, if you redeem Hydrate, I will drink. We already did once. Um, yeah, we teach you to drink. There was a Hydrate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, there's also Telescope Help Tags, which or it might just be help, Telescope Help, and you can search all of the NeoVim help, which is pretty cool. Oh, or that. That's you do HTML. Um, uh, did it work? Is it working? I don't think so. Okay, cool. That's fine. I think it might be help tags. Help tags? Yeah. Oh, no, sorry. Tel uh, telescope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help. Uh, two words? No, 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 one word. But if you press tab when you're like right. at help, it should work probably. Yeah, can... oh, help under. It's nice. I can be not silly and actually like use my tools. <laughs> yeah, so now if you type like telescope.theme or something like that, it'll probably have some info about it or something. I yeah, see. Tel oh, telescope.theme. Okay. There you go. So then you can just press enter and it'll help that and you'll open Whoa. it up in your window and blah, 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 which is pretty cool. So then you could read about it. <clears throat> that is cool. Oh, that's it. Did you redeem hydrate earlier? My bad. But you can uh, you can close out of the help window for now. Okay, cool. That is very cool, though. I didn't know that you could do that. Yeah. Okay, so now what we need to do, though, which is a pretty cool pretty cool trick, is uh, we can do. So we're gonna do that same no remap that we had started last time, right? So we're gonna do no remap and then control uh, underscore, which is actually control slash, but it's just hashtag terminal things. Mhm. Mm uh, control underscore. Okay which is actually slash, yes. Okay, yep. and then we're doing- And then we'll do command again. Command? The, like oh, we have the, on the- Oh, the CMD, yeah, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. um, so now you can say Lua. Right, and now can you guess what we're gonna do? Uh, the bash bunny, um, okay. oh, the mappings okay. that I export, that I return? Yeah, okay, all right, all right. I like where you're going. Well, uh, so Dot. you wanna actually do uh, bash bunny, cause ba oh, bash, bash bunny- Oh, bash bunny mappings, right. right. Because it's within Bash Bunny. Okay. Um, close. You don't have to do dot mapping. So you named oh. the table mappings, but that doesn't actually matter. You just returned a table. Right? So now when mm. you do require Bash Bunny, that's going to basically be in Lua. That's just that table that you returned. Right? So it's like you're calling a function. Require Bash Bunny. Is just a is just like you call the function. It looks up. Okay, I found bash money dot lua. I execute it. Oh, it has a return value. Okay, mm -hmm. and it returns that return value. Does that make sense? Okay, so basically it's saying that like when I do this, um, in this case, this is this underscore is slash. So like when I do control yep. slash, um, it's going to like basically act on that return, whatever it's returning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So so now what we can do is require bash bunny and then we're going to do dot because we're going to access the table at the end, right? Just like how we were accessing other tables. And then what we called it like cur underscore buff, right? Cur it was underscore mappings buff. cur, can we? Uh, so let's look at, let's just look at your Lua file again because I think um, it'll be easier if we're looking uh, mm -hmm. at it. You're not wrong. So see how it just literally returns mappings? Yeah. Mappings, the name, disappears, right? Oh, because okay, it's so just we don't a, need to worry about it's it. It's just a table. You could call it whatever you wanted. Blah, mm -hmm. you could call it M, you can call it my cool temporary table. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So you're just gonna do cur buff exactly right. And then you want to call that function. So we need to put the parentheses, right? Just like you would normally do when you're calling a function. And then you're gonna put C the C R, the like less than CR, the carriage return thing, at the end of this line, uh, not inside the oh, parentheses. Oh, sorry, my bad. Okay. Uh, at the uh, end of this line, yeah, 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 okay. So I can do, uh, yeah, 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 okay, okay. Let me just not, let me just function. <laughs> you're, you're good, you're good. Right, because this is like you were literally typing that part out, so you're basically gonna say, okay, what I really wanna do is I wanna run Lua, Require mm -hmm. bash money dot cur buff, and then I'm going to press enter, and NeoVim will execute that Lua code, which is really just require bash money dot cur buff. Yeah, so right? basically what I'm doing is it's like the same as what we had here, 
We're just yep. making this like this. Uh, or sorry, not not that. Yeah, we should. Uh, thing, but we like... should close the Lua thing on the left though because they can't see. Oh yeah, uh... sorry, my bad, my bad. Yeah, um, we'll just rotate it for now. Um, okay. But basically, yeah. So what this is doing is it's going from so the carriage return you see in our no remap on line for um 447. Um, that carriage return is marking the end of that because it's basically doing that whole like Lua require telescope, blah, 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 is happening in the, in the Lua file. And then we're calling the curbuff function, which does all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then now we're just remapping it in Vim script so that it can associate the control slash with the function that we're doing in the Lua file. Yeah, literally perfect. Yeah, okay. literally perfect. So does that make sense? So this is where things like in my mind, this is where like, Oh, okay, right. So I'm just writing Lua. It's all Lua. So what if mm -hmm. I just wanted to add like a new thing inside of my curve buff mapping? Oh, well, I'm just extending that with Lua. So you can imagine sort of like over time what you're going to have happen is you're able to sort of like really easily incrementally like tune telescope into exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's like the exciting the exciting part. The Lua's inside the computer. Ah, uh, yes, of uh, course. <laughs> uh, so now... There's there's one caveat that I need to say um, before we go further. Require the function will only execute a Lua file once. So if you change something about your bash bunny dot Lua file in the same um, in the same like NeoVim session, it will not reload that file. Okay, do you, does that make sense? It only executes the file once. Yeah. So there's sense. a way there's a way to get around that. Um, and it's not it's not it's not like crazy complicated. Um, I can the um, the but let's let's wait to do that part first. Uh, mm -hmm. and let's so let's just quit out of NeoVim. So this is why we're gonna have to quit out, is because it's not gonna reload your bash bunny file. Uh, we're going to need to like restart NeoVim. And then in the next time when it executes your file, it will um, basically be reloading, right? Does that make sense? So if we, you can just open up a new NeoVim now again with like your init.vim or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to first try <clears throat> this with a control slash. We're doing control slash? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's see. First tried. First tried. So that called the code from your bashbunny.lua file. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, nice. Okay, great. So you can imagine, you know, some of the more complicated telescope configurations that you want to make. You're just going to add those into your bashbunny.lua file. Um, for really simple ones, you could just directly, you know, map those via a mapping with like telescope find files enter. You know what I mean? Like those those simple ones um we'll we'll do that yeah and i'll upload this to youtube uh slice down a little bit and you know <clears throat> all that kind of jazz afterwards mm -hmm. <clears throat> um okay if you want i can quickly give you something to reload your config sure um so that then you like reload the loop like so it'll reload, reload the, the lua and the vim script mm -hmm. from my in init.vim oh yeah we can make it do both yeah that's a good that's a great idea um let's how what's the easiest way to do this okay so i think the first thing would be let's let's make a we'll just make a little like hmm, should we make a vim script function that seems a little obnoxious uh, let's instead do something like, uh, we'll just make a mapping. I think that we can get this, uh, simple. So let's just do like, uh, we can just do F4. That seems fine. You can just literally type, uh, like F4 there. Mm -hmm. Oh, do I need uh, to do these or it's just, you, just think you need, uh, so yes, you need like one pair of them, not two, uh, like, just not exactly two. Okay. like that. Yeah. And so then you can do, um, in this case, I think we actually don't want to do command because we're going to execute multiple commands. So we're going to do colon. So the first thing we're going to say, I actually don't even 100% know if this is going to work, so we're just going to find out. All right. um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to say Lua 
Uh, yeah, lowercase l, perfect. Mm -hmm. Space, and then we're gonna say uh, package dot loaded uh, dot bash bunny equals nil. So space equals nil is fine. Yep. Assignment. Okay. Uh huh. And then let's do uh, the like enter. So cr. And then let's do, uh, we're gonna, now is when we're going to resource your file. So let's do source at the end of this. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no. Oh, so oh, like not actually. Okay, actually. Okay. We're gonna add it, yeah. So you'll need another colon. Oh, another colon. Okay, okay. Yep. Uh, but don't do a space there. I think that will mm, confuse it. Like, because it's going to literally try and do enter space see, uh, before the colon. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, see how you have equals nil enter and then oh, a space? I see. Don't do that one because otherwise okay. it's going to literally try and do that. Okay, and then now, instead of doing percent, you want to be able to run this from anywhere. So you can just specify the path to your config, which would be like tilde slash dot config slash nvim slash init dot vim. Okay, and then at the end of this map bash, you should put another uh, enter so that it runs, mm -hmm. it runs this as well. Okay. And then this might work. I don't actually know. We can just try and see what happens. We can just source this, and then you can just try pressing F4. Oh, wait, I did that instead. Okay, wait. Okay, that's so <laughs> have cool. it, have it. Yeah. Uh, uh, looks like it just did it, right? Yeah, yeah very seems, cool. Seems like it did. Okay, so now we can try and do something. We can test this out. So let's open up inside of here. Let's open up like your um, Lua file. OK. Um... Which we can do with telescope. I can do that with telescope. Uh, buff. Uh, I don't think we. I don't know if we still oh, have it open. Oh, it's not open. I, I, yeah, I, I actually thought it was still open. Yep. <coughs> okay, so then here I can do file something. I know. Yeah, that file I... browser will work. We can do. You can just start typing Lua, and then it'll go, and then enter, and then. Oh wait. I'm, just, I'm silly. Sorry. One sec. Are oh, you good? Cool. Nice. So it. now inside of curbuff, let's just put like a little print statement, you know, something like print uh, reloaded or something like that. You know what I mean? Because it'll be like, this will just show that we've reloaded it inside of this function. Okay. So put that like here? Yeah, yeah. Just like print or something. Oh, print, print, print. Okay. Mm -hmm. Print and the syntax for this is just normal. Okay. okay. Yep. Just print. Just teach. Yeah, that works. Okay, so now we press F4, so that hopefully it, it we do our like. Okay, we're gonna reload everything, and now do Control Slash. It did work. Yay! Look, print it out, teach. So right, so you see, so now it's like okay, now you could just to reload your config from anywhere. All you do is press Alt or you just press F4. Boom, you're all set. It's gonna reload. So any changes that you make, anything that you're doing, boom, very cool, all set and working. <laughs> sure, should use relative number. It's a personal preference, Flash. People can use whatever they want. Isn't it amazing, Daniel? Yeah. Or Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. So there you go. Awesome. Now you can so now you can just write any new mappings you want. You can change those. You can keep playing around with it, right? So if you just like wanted to test out, okay, what does it look like if we passed Ah, so here's an example. You go to get Ivy and inside of get ivy let's make a new table here or sorry just oh, on like here, line yeah yeah okay i was actually gonna okay mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. i hear you so let's make a new table and do something like height equals 10 for rockerville uh-huh and so now we do the f4 and now you do control slash um i don't actually does height even work Shoot, I probably yeah, should have. Uh, should no, it's okay. We maybe can, it's um, results. I actually don't even remember. I gotta go. Me... I gotta go check telescope. <laughs> I don't know what the other themes are that we can use. Uh oh, you could try uh, get drop down of uh, get underscore and then drop down is one one word. D R O P W. Oh, okay. Like that, and then I can yep. do. Let's yep. refresh. 
and then we'll do oh nice it worked yeah so it's like so that's how you could you can start iterating like really really quickly between um each of the like you know whatever you're trying to play with or however you're trying to work with it etc so i think mm -hmm. that's uh Oh, so, oh, we'll do another example. So let's uh, escape out of this. And then you could try passing, I think it's, let me make sure. I think it's preview equals false. Shoot, I should really, I should really know this. Um, <laughs> or is it previewer? I think it's previewer equals false. Yes, previewer equals false inside of that uh, same configuration for height. Yep, it's previewer. Okay. Oh, I'm choking on stream chat. You can leave height there. It doesn't I don't it won't make a difference. Previewer and what do I send that to, sir? Equals false. False. Okay. Sweet. And so now just F for it. Mm-hmm. Control slash it. Nice. And so, so like you can turn off different aspects of it too if you want. So if it's like you don't think you need that preview or you find it like busy, ooh, Rocker Boo is so right. Let's hit it with that wind blend equals ten. Okay. Wind blend equals ten is one of my faves. Add it, add it in here. You just do wind and then blend. Yep, equals ten. Mmm, -hmm. Rocker, good call. Whoa. Oh, but does she not? Have, you you may not have set term GUI colors. I think it gets it messed up. Uh, press uh, just quit out of this. Do uh, colon set. Uh, sorry, oh, wait, in like, uh, oh, sorry. Okay. Set and then term. Just type term and then GUI and then hit tab mm -hmm. and enter. Oh, why does it make it so ugly though? <laughs> Huh. I actually don't know why it would do that. I guess you can't use maybe that's my maybe that's my my actual like what my terminal looks like. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. We can just just quit out of everything and we'll just we'll just leave. I don't know why uh, the colors. Yeah, it it could, it could be. be the color. That, that could actually be my terminal thing. Yeah. So let's just uh, just uh, just quit out of everything. We'll just pretend that that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we'll just pretend that didn't happen and open it, open it back up. No one saw that. No one saw those colors. No, no one saw those colors. Oh, here. And I, I, don't know, I don't know why uh, it's something with the color scheme or the terminal, one or the other. I don't know. All right. So now what we need to do, though, is you really just got to get you got to get one mapping at least for find files, right? Yes. Uh, that can be anything you want. You can just li literally do telescope find files. No reason to make any special mappings for it in here. You can just do it directly in your like init.vim by doing a no remap. Okay. Just... Okay. So it can be whatever you want. A lot of people use control P because that's one of the first ones that people used or you could use, I don't know. You know, whatever you whatever you like, or it could be like, I have a lot of mine actually prefixed with like leader, so I do like leader ff for find files or leader. You know, so you could make mm -hmm. you could choose that however you want. It doesn't even it doesn't even you know, uh, you, the ffs yeah, yeah. go after. So it's like leader inside of the um less than greater than chapters, and then just the letters ff, but no spaces. Then now you do leader ff. I don't know what your um, leader my is. My leader is space. Nice, that's a good one. So boom. Now you should never be open in nurture basically to find files. Right? You're always just thinking, I'm it. gonna spash space FF. I'm gonna type some small subset of the characters to go to the thing that I want. Mm -hmm. And then it's gonna do uh, do cool stuff. 